Yo, what's poppin'? It's the hyphen and welcome back to another episode of the Dami Podcast. Today's special guest is extremely influential in the skateboarding industry. Him and his skateboard company, Braille Skateboarding, have inspired, motivated, and taught so many skateboarders and brought many new skateboarders into this world. Today's special guest, Aaron Cairo. What's poppin', bro? Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> hey, man. Thank you for having me. I'm actually at your place. Normally, uh, we do the podcast at my studio, which is out in the LA area. I'm up here in the Bay at Braille headquarters. And uh, I've actually been wanting to come out here for a long time. Uh, Ricky Glazer gave me an invite a while back, but I haven't came up here. So when you and me connected, yeah. you were like, hey, uh, you know, I'm free. I'm like, I even told you, I was like, I'll come up to you. I don't mind. Yeah. And uh, man, this is this is awesome. Just seeing it in person is is uh incredible right behind you i know they can't really see because like it's all blurry but yeah you have all these skateboards on the wall crazy boards crazy boards yeah Cra yeah, yeah yeah they're not just regular skateboards they're crazy boards <laughs> behind you we had normal skateboards <laughs> <laughs> yeah now those uh we're gonna get into more about you about yeah. braille and all that stuff but i want to touch on these uh crazy boards that are behind you these are boards that people your fans and supporters have sent in for you guys to skate right yeah so we'll probably cover this. I don't know if I'm going to tell the whole story, but we'll probably cover this. But we started this series where we would go in um, to Home Depot or whatever random store and we would just make anything into a skateboard. Put trucks and wheels on it? Trucks and wheels, yeah. So I think the first episode was literally just a two by four. Like pretty simple. Yeah, 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 just yeah. go get a two by four, put trucks and wheels on it. And then we did that video and then the fans loved it a lot. Yeah. Um, the people watching the YouTube channel. What and then kind of they, gave you that idea to like try something like that? Yeah, good question. So the idea came from looking at the YouTube, um, our YouTube channel and how it was working. And then YouTube actually within the system made a change and it changed from views to watch time. Right. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because before it used to be, you could have 10 seconds of watch time, but the views are what the algorithm yes. preferred to push out videos but yeah. then when they switched to watch time it was about how long could the people stay engaged on your video so it changed from short one to two three minute videos to now the preferable length was over five seven minutes yeah exactly so it was an interesting little shift and then we were looking at that and we were going what could we do that wouldn't just be like a normal regular thing right. so the other thing that we we're trying to solve is i had been making tutorials right and i feel like i had made every tutorial under the sun <laughs> moon and stars like 500 times, right. like probably literally have like 200 Ollie tutorials, how to Ollie <laughs> higher off a curb, up a curb, like everything you can Every imagine. Every variation yeah. that you could do with your feet on a board. So that only takes you so far right. until you're like, how do I get a new audience coming into the tutorial videos? And then we, we entertain the entertain current them. subscribers. Yeah. And then that idea came about and we did that first episode and it just went crazy. Really? And then we were probably like 10 episodes in before people were like, that's it. Like we're going to, you guys suck at building. So we're going to build you some like proper boards and we're going to send it. And then that series started and it was did, called uh, You Make It, We Did skate. you come up with the idea of, hey, send your board in or did somebody just randomly send a board in? No, nah, it was all like fan generated, like we're going to send you boards. So I, the first one was like giant crazy wheels. And then we had like a metal board, all stuff that like, granted like we would never make <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah. we're not good enough to make it yeah that's just fascinating See, yeah. seeing them here because i've seen them on the videos so now to just see them on the wall it's, it's awesome man uh we'll go more into the braille process and stuff like yeah. that let's take it back a little bit and go into skateboarding so when i was growing up my dad worked seismic uh -huh. um i don't know a lot of people don't like know what that is or, or no, yeah no, no. kind of so he would basically He's like sort of like a very environmentalist dude. Uh -huh. And he works with the oil companies to basically make sure that they're being environmentally friendly. Uh, okay, okay. So he's, I forget what they call it exactly, sort of like a watchdog. So he will go, for example, to Alaska and like, let's say they drop one drop of oil on the snow. Then they're cutting five feet width and five feet deep in the snow to contain that one drop of oil. Like oh, for example. Wow. Yeah, so he's like overseeing these crews and looking to pretty to, much protect the earth from any of the hazards that we could yeah. introduce to it. Okay. And to make sure their data is correct. So yeah. they're they're setting off charges and then like mapping the subsurface uh, to find o methane gas, oil, all kinds of stuff that's fascinating. so that then it could be mined, etc. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing because yeah. It, yeah. So but anyway, so I was born in Denver, Colorado, and my dad was moving all over the place. 
And then when we were, when I was seven, and he would take the family or just him. Yeah, sometimes, but not always take the family, gotcha. right? And I was super young, right? So、mm -hmm. like from being born till the year to I was seven years old,、yeah. and then my parents moved to Montana and bought a motel there. Bought、We、a motel. motel. Yeah,、oh, wow. bought a motel from my grandparents actually. So then I grew up from the age of seven till eighteen when I left in a motel. Oh, that, wow, that's、yeah. crazy. <laughs> Before going to more into skateboarding,、like、yeah, what was that experience like? Because like a lot of times you get in motels, you get a wide variety of people, some、yes. super chill people, and then sometimes you get some crazy people or some 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 sketchy business going down. Yes, how was that growing up in a motel and having all those different types of people around you? Yeah, it was interesting. Well, I never really thought of this too much, but a motel is also a twenty four seven business, right? So there's no. Yeah. It doesn't close, right? <laughs> and my so we had like what we called like the living quarters, and it was like downstairs underneath this motel. So somebody could come at like two a.m. and ring the doorbell, and my mom would have to get up and go check them into a room. Right. So we like it was like all the time, and I saw my parents working this right. Yeah. So my dad was doing that and also still working seismic where he would go. Wow. But the reason they bought the motel was to have my dad closer and like be more of a family, right? Gotcha. So that was like, but he would still go every now and then. Whereas before, he was gone all the time. Right. Like you know. So that's interesting. And then I, yeah, I never really thought about it, but this like environment growing up instilled definitely like a very intense work ethic. Okay. You know, like、Because、we were saw, already talking saw,、yeah. about the work ethic. Yeah, the grind. It's yeah, twenty four seven. Yeah. Because currently you're twenty four seven. Yeah. You're like. You don't close pretty much. Yeah, I work all the time, and、yeah. I'm always, you know, I think a lot of people are like this nowadays.、Um, they're always at least very like thinking about something. Yeah. Yeah. Like running a YouTube channel is pretty intense, and you're always thinking about like, oh, I could do that idea, I could、right. do that idea. You know, we're like five thousand episodes deep, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's a lot. That's incredible.、Um, but yeah, growing up in that environment, yes, there was crazy stuff that would occur. Somebody would come in and try and break into the hot tub that was closed at the middle of the night, and then、yeah. my dad would have to go out there and be like, "What are you guys doing? Get out of here!"、Yeah. All kinds of crazy stuff. What was one of the craziest things that you can remember that you're like, "Oh damn, this is this is." Kind of wild. Yeah. Okay. There's. We had cameras set up, so there was a door that was fully locked, and it was to going into the hot tub. And on this other side is another door, and this guy is in there trying to break in, and I'm watching as like a kid on the camera. Now, the hot tub is not in a room. It's no, separate. Separate. Okay. So. Yeah, separate from all the rooms is is just the hot tub, right? So this guy's trying to break the door and break in, and my dad has to like pop out of the door, and he basically is like, basically scares the guy, and the、yeah. guy's like <laughs> starts freaking out, and actually the guy just takes off running.、Damn. I don't know, that was just one like yeah, kind yeah. of random yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, and you saw it. Yeah, I yeah. was watching on the camera. So yeah, as yeah. a kid, you're always thinking like. What's What gonna happen? happen? Yeah. What's gonna happen to my dad? It's like a reality、Am、TV show you're watching. Am I gonna have to run、watching? out there?、Yeah. You know. So. How old were you? Do you remember? Like, I was probably like twelve. Damn. Yeah, that's sketch. That's yeah. Like, yeah, that's a little scary. You <laughs> know, be watching that, man. Yeah,、um, but it was also it's a very small town,、okay. like two thousand people、oh, wow. max population. But it's a it's also a tourist town, so it's a it's in one of the main entrances to Yellowstone National Park.、Oh, okay, so a lot of people stop by.、There. A lot of people stop through there, which gets you know all kinds of bad, people. Yeah. Yeah. But in a small town like that, it's very safe. Like you、yeah. know everybody, super safe. So、and、it was that, like that a great place. That motel was in Montana. Yeah, Red Lodge,、yeah. Montana. Okay, and then you said you were there till till eighteen. Yeah. Did you discover skateboarding while you were there or after? Yeah. So. I I always say I started skateboarding around ten, just because the math is easier, you know. Now I'm thirty eight, I'm thirty nine. Why do I always get my? I'm thirty nine years old. Starts to happen, man. I'm、yeah. about to be forty years old. Don't tell anybody. All right, well.、Um, but yeah, so I've been skating for twenty nine years. About to be thirty years. Really crazy.、Um, but yeah, just around the age of ten. Actually, when I was six, I saw some skateboarder. Like I have this. Some memories are so vivid. vivid. When I was six, I was riding in this car. I was looking out of the car window, and I saw these three skaters skating down the street, and they turn into an alley. You know, not like a kick turn, like an actual like carving turn. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, at the age of six, I mean, it would have been literally 1989. Wow. And you know, totally like 80s board style. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember thinking that was so amazing. Yeah. And making that kind of decision right there, like I'm going to do that. 
probably took me, you know, another several years until I even got a board. Yeah. And then, yeah, I started skating in Red Lodge, Montana. Do People we just, used to make fun of me. You skate in dirt roads. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's the sticks. That's correct. Did you, would you skate like in the parking lot of the motel or behind yes. it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we actually just made a video because I just went back there. Oh, wow. So I went to the parking lot of the motel, did a kickflip where I did my first kickflip, where I did my first ollie. Wow. Yeah, it was super fun. And uh, with it being like a hotel parking lot, your parents were like, okay, skate? Like, it yeah. was... Damn. Well, did you get like a, were there a lot of cars moving back and forth or it was kind of more, okay. No, it's super small town. Yeah. Okay, so, so like so, there's a car every gotcha. okay, so, couple hours. Yeah. yeah okay. So <laughs> it wasn't too much of a risk factor. For you no, in the parking lot. super safe, super good. Now being there in this motel, did you find any other skaters or were you skating by yourself? Like, like how did, like, what was the motivation to like start learning tricks? Cause I, for me, when I started skateboarding, it was, uh, I had a neighbor who was outside skateboarding and I had a skateboard that I had bought just because another friend of mine like a few years before, but I never really used it. I yeah. just had it. So when this kid started skating, um, we ended up becoming friends and he was like, hey man, like you should skate. I was like, well, I have a board. And then that, I, like skating with other people kind of like helped teach me how to do it. Right. Did you, did you have friends that you watch it on mags or like what was the process? Yeah, good question. When I first started, I felt like there was like nobody. And I remember there was this one summer where this person, I don't even know the person's name, totally random. Like I just saw a kid with a skateboard and I remember that he could ollie and I was just like, what is occurring? <laughs> oh, it was crazy, right? Was and then wizardry. he like, help me. I think about this a lot because I make all the tutorials on YouTube and I think about what would it have been like if I had YouTube when I was a kid right. and I had every tutorial known to man, yeah. every kind of resource you could imagine to learn to skateboard. Um, but anyways, I saw that. I thought it was so cool. And then he got me into like trying to ollie over this hose. And I think, you know, another thing that I see kids say a lot is they're like, I've been skateboarding for two weeks. I can't ollie. I suck. Da, da, da. And it's like, I spent probably every day skating for six months straight to ollie that hose. But wow. once I did it, I was like, it's just like a water hose, like a, like yeah. a small, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, small yeah. water hose. Damn. Yeah. So I saw him. And Do then, you remember the, uh, the sense of like a comp accomplishment off of that little water hose? Yeah. More than anything else. I feel like a lot of people remember their first kickflip was like a big deal. Mine was too, but not like the Ollie. That Ollie was like something, something yeah, special. I don't have too much of a memory of my first Ollie, but I remember when I started Ollieing before I could kickflip, I would try to Ollie everything. First a crack, then yeah. like a little brick or yeah. whatever. And I remember I stacked up like these three bricks on top of each other. It's still tiny. Yeah. Still like really not high. But I remember I was, uh, some family friends were over and I was trying to show them, look what I could do. And I kept clipping the, the bricks and I was like so disappointed that they, <laughs> they were there, they were watching me and then they had to leave and I didn't land it. And then I finally landed like the next day. And I was like, that was like huge to me. I was like, I landed this Ollie over these bricks. Yeah, yeah. that's that feeling of accomplishment. That's yeah. why it's so, it's hard to describe even what that is. It's right? special, yeah. yeah. When I explain this to non-skateboarders, I'm like, we fall way more than we land tricks. Right. It's like, you fail way more than you win. Right. But when you win, that win is just like incredible. Right. And I think it's like that in life too. That's what I try to tell people. Like if you think that you're just going to go about life and you're just going to like win, 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 and everything's just going to go your way, like... Give First, you're wrong. Yeah. And, <laughs> and second, like, you're going to be very heartbroken. Very disappointed yeah. many times. But yeah, so then a little bit later, my brother, who's three years older than me, he started skating. Sick. And then there's a a town town it's probably it's the biggest city in montana which has a hundred thousand people which you know for california that's like yeah it's, that's, like, yeah, it's, yeah, like, it's a, like a block yeah <laughs> literally like a block but for there it was big right and so that's where we would have to go to get boards it's an hour There's drive a skate park i mean a skate shop yeah the skate shop um the skate shop was zoomies in the mall oh, wow. rimrock mall they had zoomies back then? They had a zoomies back then. Now, wow. now we're talking about, I was probably at this point, probably around 11. So what does that make it? 94? Yeah. I'm pretty around sure. We could fact check the zoomies yeah. origins, but I'm pretty sure it was right then or close to then. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. then, so then I had my, my crew of my brother and his friends and Same. they started skating. So then from there, kind of like yeah. blossomed. Now, you said you were there till you were 18. Yeah. What took you out of there was skateboarding? Yeah, good question. All right, so I went to high school in Red Lodge. I did really well in high school. And 
I got actually, this is kind of like an interesting thing in my life. I got a full ride scholarship to any school in Montana. Wow. But so I you were was killing like, it. Yeah I, was, yeah. I did really well in school. Well, it's funny when I was younger, I just wanted to skate. Yeah. And then my, my parents showed me this like super cheesy. I've been meaning to find this. It's called where there's a will, there's an A. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. a super, cause I wasn't doing well before yeah. they were basically trying to show me like, look, if you want to get A's, you can get A's. Right. And then I realized if I get A's, my parents will let me do whatever I want. That was the key to your freedom. Yeah. So I could go with the older skaters to, to go on trips and skateboard and go to Billings, which is the big city mm -hmm. our North and skate anytime I wanted. Yeah. So then I just started getting straight so, A's. So were they, when you were not doing good, they were, were they putting more limitations on you? Were you like, yeah, like having consequences because- Yeah, okay. you're not allowed to go out. What are you like skate, you know? Yeah. I think a lot of parents are like, what is this skateboarding? You're just gonna go and do some like crazy stuff now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously. Yeah, my mom was similar. She, uh, she didn't, like I had a lot of freedom, but it's because I earned it. Yeah. And then if I, if I was messing up, then I wouldn't be able to go do those things. And I, and I was like obsessed with skateboarding. Yeah. So I was like, I want to be able to skate all day, every day. So long as I do what I got to do, she lets me. Yeah. So yeah. then you, so then I got straight A's and then it was kind of this funny thing where it was like all of my schoolmates went to university of Montana, pretty much everybody. Wow. And I was like, should I go there? But I had been to Vancouver, British Columbia on a skate trip. And I was like, this is like where my so heart is. So on a skate is. trip, yeah. by this point, you're already a part of a team. My friend, he was the manager of Zoomies. Then he left Zoomies and started his own skate shop. And then I was part of that team. And I went up to Vancouver and we we're filming video parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these old video parts of like Vancouver, British Columbia skate footage. And I was like, I, I want to pursue skateboarding. Right. I don't want to pursue school. Right. There's no course in school to teach you how to skateboard. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to go to Vancouver, British Columbia, U UBC, and I'm going to study film. Yeah. And I ended up there for one year and then dropped out and moved to San Francisco. Now, was the studying film like an actual passion for filmmaking or was it just kind of like that'll help me in skateboarding? Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was making skateboard and snowboard videos. So yeah. in Montana, it's snow. Now, all at winter. this time frame, it's what the the mid nineties, late nineties. Yeah. So let's see. I was born in eighty three, and this time frame was eighteen. So it was two thousand and one. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember like? what you were filming on? What was the format? Like VHSC? Was it mini DV? Yeah, like, it was, ah, uh, what is it called? High eight. High eight. You remember yeah, high eight? I do. I First do. there was eight. And then when high eight came out, you were like, dude, better than eight. <laughs> and then the VX 1000 came out. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, I cannot afford no VX 1000, but my friends, they did get one. And then, you know, then it was mini DV. Yeah. And then the VX 1000 is still going to this day. <laughs> That's crazy. Some people. Before we continue with your story, what's your opinion on that? I am not a fan because I'm, I'm a filmmaker. At yeah. Art, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all these things. And I, I love like filmmaking. I, I love the classic and vintage stuff and stuff like that. But I, I'm really obsessed with like high quality. Yes. So as the technology advances, like I'm always like, ooh, you know, HD, 4K, 8K, like all these different things. Yeah. I do not like when skateboarders currently film their parts in like a VX and have like this ch shitty quality. Oh, like he's trying to get canceled, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> and it's like SD and it's like, no, like all this great footage you're doing, like you're not future proofing your, your these amazing clips you're getting. I don't yeah. know. It's just, that, I mean, the look is like, is exciting when you see it. Yeah. But it's like, oh no, but like you're so limited now on these clips you have for like, if you do a documentary, if you do a yeah. commercial, if you do any of this other stuff, like it's hard to transition that into something that's usable for something bigger than your part. Yeah. I don't know. That's just my opinion. So what's your opinion? Well, on let it? me ask you this question because I've really thought a lot about this. So I watch my parts that were filmed on a VX and then I watch my parts now and I don't know if my skating has gotten worse or if the HD makes it literally look worse. Because I just think it's interesting. I go, I look at these parts and I go, there's something about like the way it's filmed that makes it almost look like I did the tricks better when I didn't. <laughs> I really, I really think that I didn't. Yeah. Um, so in this day and age, like when the first HD camera came out, then I had a real job. I worked at a golf course. Now we're getting later in the timeline. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. But, it's a podcast. We can bounce yeah, around. We can bounce around. But then I, uh, yeah, I bought that camera. 
It was a Sony. I literally don't even remember what it was called, but it was literally like the first HD one. I have I have that one to this day. The one that like has the, a flip the longer, out screen. Yep, yeah. Yep. I still have it. Yeah, that's a good camera. Yeah, and was, I, I and remember they use um, HDV tapes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah it uses the tapes. Yep. And I, and I saw that footage quality. And I went, this is the best thing ever. But that, the funny thing about it is, is when you were filming on high eight and then you saw the VX1000, it was the same thing. So then HD comes out. I don't know why people don't upgrade. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I understand like the, uh, what do you call it? The nostalgia. Yeah, I guess the nostalgia factor of it. Like we could also be filming like skate video parts on high, on like eight millimeter film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. could, and some people do, and it's like yeah. an artsy thing. Right. I guess my feeling towards it is kind of like that. Yeah. But I think it's an interesting factor that I go, I actually think my clips look better on a VX1000, but I would never film a part on a VX1000 now. I, wonder, I just wouldn't do that. I wonder if like, have you at, like outside of yourself, because you're thinking to yourself, oh, I like these older clips better. Yeah. Have you asked somebody else, which do you think is better? That's what I was meaning. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean from you. Have you analyzed like the old clips versus this? Do you think it's like because the HD is so crisp? Like if your foot is a little bit off, you see you everything. You see everything. Yeah, you see. And now with things slow mo, you saw every yeah, you little see, detail. Yeah, you see that it's not that clean. Yeah. And you see like the little mini tic tac. Or, yeah. And also, too, I think like, I wonder if like style clothing changes the vibe. Cause I like, when I look at my older clips, I dress baggier. Same. And there was something about baggy clothing that just cleaned you up. That's a good point too. And, and I now think that I dress like thinner clothing, like it doesn't look as fresh to me. Yeah. So I just went through that whole thing. Like my old clips, I always have baggy pants, big pants. Well, my really old clips, I had really, really big <laughs> pants. And then the pants got, you know, more normal, but yeah. baggy. And yeah. then I went to like, not like skinny jeans, but, but, but kind but of. Yeah. yeah. And my wife is all into that. And then just recently, like, Maybe baggy three months ago, back in. I went back. I said, that is it. Bro, I'm so I've seen excited. so many skaters <laughs> with the baggy clothing. And I posted up some old clips recently where me wearing baggy clothing. Yeah. And people were like, oh, damn, that's a, that's a fresh outfit. Yeah. Like, bro, that was like 20 years ago. <laughs> Literally. It is. But I, I love it. Me I too. am so excited. I, I went to Woodward and I thought, what are these? This is my childhood. <laughs> yeah. All these kids in baggy corduroy <laughs> pants. Right. And they, like yeah. this one kid had like the frosted tips. Yeah. I was like, dude, what the? Yeah. So for you, though, you prefer, do you prefer or you just still really appreciate if it's done today, the the SD footage? I appreciate and prefer HD. And I don't totally understand why people don't. The only thing I could think, like my kind of like reasoning to say, okay, I guess I can understand that is the nostalgia factor. Mm -hmm. But I don't, but and some people are like so like VX or nothing, VX, VX, yeah. and they're like trading these and old you cameras. Know what? There's some like crazy for those who like to edit videos and stuff. They're really dope plugins now that emulate VX footage. Oh yeah, like the the grain, the the you know the whole VHS vibe yeah. or, the, or the DV vibe or the high eight vibe. They have a lot of plugins. Like I have a plugin that I use from a, a company called Red Giant that they make some really dope uh, effects for video editing and like they have some really dope old school film yeah. cassette type vibe uh plugins and it looks legit it looks yeah good. but really at the end of the day you're taking footage that looked better and you're making it look worse on purpose yeah. like let's just say like you're making it look worse yeah so you're gonna film on a vx1000 when you could have a dslr whatever kind of yeah hvx or whatever people are filming even your with. phone even your that phone bad. you know phones right? are way better than the, and the your, vx yeah, so there's yeah, there's that nostalgia factor which I'm not going to like fault anybody for. Right. I think that the artsy factor of it is cool, yeah. you know. Yeah, so that's what I think. But I I'm definitely <laughs> prefer the HD footage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you're filming. You yeah. go to you go to school for film really just to get closer to skateboarding. Yeah, and and mind you, I'd already made like maybe two or three full length and when I mean full length, it's like I have a part, like five of my friends, friends have a part yeah, and I intro, edited outro, everything. Like yeah. And I was like crazy about the editing. I would put the track down first and every song would land to every trick would land to the beat. To the beat yeah. It was snowboard and skateboard video. So I, I made a lot. Right. And so then I also had people telling me, you're really talented at this video editing and the filmmaking. Yeah. You should do that. So I was like, well, if skateboarding doesn't work out, I have something to fall back on. Yeah. Which I it don't was really recommend. just a plan B. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was a plan B. Yeah, which an unwanted plan B. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very which unwanted. is kind of funny because now if you look at my career, a I lot of it has to do with editing. Career without a <laughs> yeah. video. That's the great thing about 
people that really uh, find ways to create things. And we'll touch into this part next. But yeah. like you got sponsored. You were on a team. They cut you. So you, now you don't have that sponsor. At this point, a lot of skateboarders and people could be like, okay, my career's over or I guess I'm not going to do this anymore. And for many people, that's where they would just say, all right, well, it, it, I had a run and that's what it is. Yeah. Instead, you utilized your uh, experiences, the knowledge you've had across different aspects of life and editing and filmmaking to be like, okay, I'm going to just create something myself and put it out. And that was kind of like that fire that started everything that you are doing now. Yeah. So, those experiences, the knowledge of going to school, filmmaking and doing these things that were plan B, whatever, they've all come full circle to come now be a big portion of the success and the influence that you have on skateboarding, which is amazing. Yeah. And I think that's like something that's beautiful that people should actually think about when they're like learning new things. So some people are like, I don't want to learn any, anything else but this one thing. Yeah. Which there's a, there's a great aspect that being hyper-focused on one thing is, can be beneficial, but at the same time, learning other things and then applying that into the, your other avenues it just makes things better yeah it opens more doors right and you can be hyper focused on one thing and be what i would call like a professional in that thing right. so you're looking for like expert technical professional quality in that and even if that's like let's say that's video making but let's say that's there's two parts of video making there's one the communication of the video mm -hmm. and then there's like the technical aspects of like the lighting was perfect the filming was perfect all of this was perfect right and you want to get like I would always say to people, you want to put your communication first and foremost. Right. So figure out what you're trying to communicate and then try and get your technical aspect as high as possible. But don't, the second you start to lose that communication, then you, you're starting to It's a great way to put that. Yeah. Yeah. No, so that's facts. you're in Montana doing this team, you go to the uh, college, you only go for one year in this college. You didn't finish college. No, okay. one year. One year. In one year of film school, you learn nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of learn. To... I mean, but I'm sure you learned some of the technical stuff that, like, no, 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 literally. So this oh. is a four year school. Okay, so it's not a trade school, right? right and right, in your right. first year, all my I was on all general classes, right? And then the only film classes that I had were literally like watching and critiquing films, history, which I hated. Yeah, I thought okay, all these people, all these students and this professor are arguing why they chose the blue ball on the counter and the camera's panning across and they're like saying like, well, blue is this real color that's like a deep meaning. And I'm like, they didn't have a green ball. They had a blue ball. <laughs> there was the only one left at Ikea. It doesn't matter. Right. Literally, right. it doesn't matter. Yeah, a lot of those like, things. Like, don't write that... a paper about that. <laughs> It's interesting. Like some people just over dissect. Yeah. It's just like, uh, I didn't really see that actually be a part of the storytelling. <laughs> I, I, I think you're just giving it a reason. Yeah. yeah. So you would. So if I were, were to continue, it would have been two years of general ed. And then, then, then you finally get to your thing, third the year courses that would. Yeah. So, OK. So if you, you get in. If you get in. Yeah. So then you only do the one year. Yeah. What did your parents say about you being like, I'm not going back to school? They said, you suck. <laughs> yeah. You suck bad. And they were pissed. Yeah. Super pissed. Yeah, because you also got to understand, and I threw this into the earlier part of the story, because I had a full ride scholarship. And at UBC, I had no scholarship. Mm. So, you know, I don't come from money. My parents don't have money. We, we, they bought a motel from my grandparents. And that was like, it's not an expensive place. This is not like a nice, rich. Yeah, bike. yeah. It's, it's, it's not bringing in a lot of money. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. But it, you know, it's a living for my parents that they were able to put and me provide through. for you guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And my dad, when he went to school, he went to horticulture school, and he had to pay for everything himself. To, to what? Horticulture. Yeah, I know. Kind of funny. What is it? Plants. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so he was learning. I, you know what's funny is I heard, maybe because we were stuck on the, the film topic, horror culture. Horror culture? No, <laughs> horticulture. Horticulture, Pretty, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, so he was learning how to grow plants yeah. in greenhouses. Oh, wow. Which is funny because now he has like his own greenhouse oh, doing sick. Like his own thing. But, but yeah, super, so he had to pay for his own schooling. So he yeah. decided when he was young, if I have a kid and he goes to school, I'm paying for it no matter what. So my dad had this very That's cool. thing. Yeah. So he put that money forward to pay for that school, which I felt super bad about. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty expensive school, yeah. right? And then I'm like, oh, I'm in for a year and I'm dipping out. Right. And they were like, 
that sucks. You know, my so, so they're you, very supportive, but they were not. Happy. Yeah, they, that was like a thing that was important to them. Yes. So you say I'm not going. Did you stay out there? Did you move? What, what, like, what, yeah, good question. What okay, so I'll I'll tell you a little bit more about this. So in Montana, Bones skateboard team came. Okay. They did a tour, and then I got I I went to the demo and I was skating. And then Rob Washburn, shout out Rob Washburn, much love. I love you. Um, he put me on the team. I was probably twelve, and on the team means I would get wheels every month. Yeah. So like every month I would get wheels. I was so stoked as a kid. And then I sent in my VHS sponsor me tapes. Yeah. We're going back. <laughs> and then I got on Grind King truck. So I was on Grind King and Bones Wheels and this skate shop that's no longer around. It was in, in Billings, Montana. Think that covers all the sponsors. So then I went to Vancouver, British Columbia, and I filmed a f another part. I was filming like crazy. Now, what was your skill level at this point? I, it's, I don't know. How do you, okay, how do you so say about I would your say, own skill level? So I would I, say, at that time frame, <laughs> I, right now, I think it's harder to determine skill levels. Yeah. Because so many people are doing so many crazy different tricks. Yeah. And some people focus more on certain types. But back then, I think in those years, it was easier to, to categorize AM level, flow level, pro level. Yeah. Uh, good. Hard for me to categorize myself, but... I was obsessed with PJ Ladd's Wonderful Horrible Life. So Amazing. I would do shifty flips. I did, you know, I feel like I did like a shifty, a backside shifty flip down a five stair, which I felt like that's pretty good. That's hard still. And I did this like day. this no slide pop over this rail that you had to like actually pop, pop out. Over. And it was the first time I ever saw anybody pop over something. I thought that was pretty rad. So I feel like I put together a video part that was like pretty good. Yeah. Like it was good enough. So I sent it. And Canada is different. Like Canada's skateboard scene is totally different. Right. And if you are, let's say you get sponsored by Volcom. Well, now there's two things. There's Volcom Canada mm. and Volcom United States. Right. So I'm living in Canada and I sent my tape to Volcom US. team manager US. Um, and he put me on the team. Sick. So I got on Volcom and then I got... I sent my tape to Habitat yeah. and then I got on Habitat. Now we're flow, right? Yeah. So where I'm at in the industry at this point is flow. flow. Yeah. Um, Which they just give you stuff. Yeah, they just no, give you stuff. There's no money involved usually, right? No money yeah. ever. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. not even, not usually, no yeah, money yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. There's no money. You get free stuff. You don't go on any trips. There's no coverage. There's basically nothing to it's help just your career. you. Posting up things, or actually not even posting up. Not there even was no posting social because there's no social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre social media. Right, right, right. It's just uh, it's just you riding around with their gear. Literally. And you're skating in the parks and they hope that some people are going to see you skating in the parks and think, wow, he's cool. He's wearing Vulcan pants. I should buy Vulcan yeah. pants. So I'm in Vancouver and then I decide that I, I would like to stay in Vancouver. Okay. Um, but the only way I'm in Vancouver is on a school visa. So the second I left school, I had this shocking realization. I can no longer stay here. They're going to kick you out. I literally can't get a job. Yeah. So, so I had to leave. So the only other place I'd ever been was a skate trip to San Francisco. Oh. And I wow. came to San I'm a manual person. I love manuals. Yeah. Especially at this time in my life, a manual. Pier all, 7. That's like the spot for manual tricks to go yes. down. Yeah, so I moved here and I'd literally skated Pier 7 every single day. Sick. Like just religiously. That's that's epic. Pier 7 and Third Army, I would go there and that's that's what yeah, I would do. Yeah. Just grind. Damn. So, who did you live with? Like what was a financial situation like if you're, you know, you were going to school, your parents had money for you to go to school, but now you didn't go to school. Are they helping you out to cuz San Francisco's always been expensive. Yeah. How how did you survive? So, I'm in I'm in Vancouver, my parents pay for the school and as part of paying for the school, you can eat at the school. Right. So, this is all covered and my yeah. life is like pretty cushy, you know, it's, at it's, least it's I livable. have a room and the food. The most important things. Yes. So then I decide to leave school and go to California. My dad drives me down and then he drops oh. me off and I'm living with some of my friends who were one so they ended up being, yeah, as much as they were unhappy with it, they ended up being supportive of, at least let me make sure you get there safe. Yes, they're always, yes. Well, that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. My parents are awesome. That's they really, it. really are. Yeah. And so, so my dad drove me down and he dropped me off and it was, but financially it was like, all right, good luck. Make it happen. <laughs> make it go. Yeah. Like you want to ride a skateboard for a living? 
good luck. Damn. So then I got a job at KB Toys in the mall. Yeah. I got paid around eight dollars an hour. It was so hard to all my money went to rent. Yeah. I remember days when I had no food, I couldn't eat. I remember calling my mom and saying, I hate to ask you, like maybe you could order a pizza. Like, Thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. Wow. <laughs> I didn't ask my dad. He'd have been like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you chose this life. You order your own pizza. But I remember it was tough. You know yeah. what I mean? And it just it just yeah. is what it is. And I remember then not only that, but trying to come up as a skater in the industry is the absolute hardest thing ever. Yeah. Like beyond hard. Yeah. I like, don't know if you had any experiences. With I that. never, I never ended up making it pro. I never, I, I got like offered a sponsorship once and then life was actually so hard that it got in my way that it, it kind of got in my way of skateboarding and I, I didn't get to see that through. Um, but yeah, no, like it was, I remember like a lot of my friends that were skating all the time, all the time. And like, no, it was, it was difficult. It yeah. was difficult. You, you know? had to be on it. I yeah. mean, I remember there were kids at Pier at a uh, pier seven that we're doing like switch backside flip over the block the, the block yeah. over it yeah. and this you know like pretty young dudes and they're like oh I, i'm getting some boards from organica and that was like at that time it was like that's sick yeah and then six months later dude's just gone yeah you know like life it's not easy and yeah. especially not easy it was hard to be seen because you didn't have the social media to like really right put yourself on blast to be like look how dope i am and it was really like a lot of other industries, it's relying on like some type of relationship. Someone exactly. to, to hook you up and put you on something and someone's friend or something. Exactly. Yeah. So I, so yeah, so I moved down. I was living with the guy that had owned the skate shop that I was a part of. Yeah. And then I, <laughs> my dogs. <laughs> oh, that's on my crotch. Hey, boy. <laughs> what are you guys doing? You got all excited. They want to be on the podcast. Yeah. So I moved to San Francisco. I'm living with this crew of skaters and I got... So when I was in when I was in Vancouver, I got sponsored by Volcom and then I got on Habitat Flow. Mm -hmm. So these two. So when I came down, um, Volcom had another team rider that lives in the Bay Area. I never say anybody's names. <laughs> I'm like, do I want to say the names or nah? Maybe nah. I, I, it depends <laughs> on how what the story's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all cool. Everybody's cool. But it's I'm in an interesting place in the skateboard world, yeah. right? So um yeah, I want to talk about that too. That's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get there. So the Volcom team manager said, hey, go skate with this dude. He's another team rider of Volcom. And I did. And then I ended up from there getting on real skateboards. Mm -hmm. And he, that other dude, basically took me in and took me into Mickey Reyes, the team manager, and just said, you're going to, like, you said I could have one person if I ever saw somebody that should get boards. And this is Aaron. I'm bringing wow, him in. Wow, that's awesome. Give him boards. Shout out to whoever that person is. Yeah. I think, right? That's it's a good thing. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, <laughs> he's rad. It's Dennis Boosnitz. Okay. Oh, yeah, sick. So Dennis man. brought no, me that's in. That's a good shout out. Good shout yeah, out. Yeah, Dennis yeah, brought man. me in. I don't know why. I just feel like some people, they might not want to be associated with what I do now. We can talk about that. Yeah. I've, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that because I think that's bullshit. Like, <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, I don't like I've never spoken to him and I don't know that he has that viewpoint at all. He he generally like doesn't totally care. I don't know why. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But a lot of the skate industry kind of not even kind of they don't really accept you and what you do in the skate industry. Right. You guys without any exaggeration, are probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest thing in skateboarding. The influence, the reach, the amount of people that you guys uh, entertain. If you look at all social media platforms, nobody's near your level. And I mean, I don't know you personally. This is our, my first time meeting. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> from everything that I've seen on um, your social media, like you truly care about skateboarding yeah. and truly care about wanting to inspire others to skate. Yeah. To me, like that's so pure. I mean, whether people have different viewpoints on whatever it is, but the what you do for skateboarding is there's no way that people can say it's not good for skateboarding. Like it's amazing. Right. So this industry, and and I've been a part of the skate industry for a bit, and I've gotten to see a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, and there's a lot of griminess, a lot of hate. Yeah. There's a lot of um just just people that if you're not part of the usual way of skate business yeah they they don't fuck with you right which is stupid right <laughs> i don't know so do you 
Do you have any idea kind of why they don't accept you in? Is I it, have so many ideas. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Expand on that a little bit because I, I could go. I, I have whole, some thoughts on it yeah. of what I think it might be. Yeah, but like, what are your kind of like your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, it's a very interesting scenario because, well, let's take it. I kind of tell you the story and kind of the history, yeah. right? So I move here to San Francisco and I'm skateboarding every single day at Pier Seven, and this is San Francisco. We got Thrasher Magazine. And we got high speed productions and we got real skateboards, yeah. deluxe, et cetera. And, you know, as a kid, I'm out here in Montana. I see like any skateboard company. I'm like, so sick. Mm -hmm. Like, I actually, I actually like got like the best sponsors. Like, imagine as a kid and you're in this little town of 2000 people. And the next thing you know, you're in San Francisco, California, riding for Volcom. I was flow for um real habitat oh habitat i was full for habitat and then the habitat team was like filming in spain and then i was like kept trying to get boards kept trying to get boards and i couldn't reach anybody i had no idea that they were there you know back in the day it wasn't it was like it is now you didn't see them on social there was media. no dms on instagram <laughs> it was like i would literally mail the sponsor me video in right wow. and it's so different now but I, and then I, I thought well i got kicked off nobody told me and so then one day i was at third and army and Dennis Businitz was there and he was like, Hey, do you need, are you getting boards? And I was like, I thought I was, but I guess not. Cause I haven't gotten any boards for six months. Wow. And he was like, that's it. Get in my car. Let's go. And he just took me right in and just drove me in and, and introduced me to Mickey Ray as the team manager and just said, Aaron's getting boards. You said I had one person. He's the person go. And then I was getting boards from them for a while. So the story that you brought up is when I got kicked off of them from real. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Dennis was with Real. Yeah. Dennis right, was with right, Real right. Skateboards. And so gotcha. then one day I went into Real to get boards and there was a woman in a business suit there. And I was like, something's going down. I don't know what it is. And I know it's not good. And I know like, I know like a good chunk of the team got cut. Yeah. And I it wasn't expected just to get cut mm. because I'm this manual dude. And who do they have on the team? Peter Ramondetta. It's like, what is he like? Nollie flipping 12 stair handrails. And mm. I'm doing manual pirouettes. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah like, yeah. let's face it. I never fit on the team. Mm. I just think Dennis liked my skating. I don't know. Someday I'll have to have a talk with him and yeah. see like how what he saw in me that made him go, I'm going to yeah. bring this kid in. But for me as a kid, I'm just like very nervous. Yeah, That's the other thing, like very nervous kid. And to go from small town Montana to big San Francisco is terrifying. It's a different world. Literal different world. I remember going into the city and seeing my first crackhead and thinking, what? <laughs> I was so scared. I'm walking down the street and this guy comes up, no teeth. Hey, and I was like, literally like, what is happening? <laughs> I never saw anything like that. Coming from a small town and just seeing like bright, shiny, like kids, they just want to have fun and they're just doing their thing. And then you see that you're like, the world is a wild place. Yeah. So, okay. So then I arrive in San Francisco, California and Thrasher Magazine and Thrasher Magazine controls the industry. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're not in Thrasher Magazine, you're not, a, you're not a professional skateboarder. I wouldn't call it a full monopoly, but it, it's, it's, it's close to it. Yeah. Before the internet, like if you weren't in Thrasher, what would you have? You had Transworld. Yeah. I guess that you could like get around Transworld a little was bit. still super popping. Yeah, it was pretty popping. Yeah. But it was kind of this funny thing. Like I remember, I mean, man, no hate on Thrasher or any of like that. Right. But, but do you remember a guy named Danny Gonzalez? And he oh. did the wall ride onto the roof. You remember that? Yes. He had made this. So there's a skater. He made this statement that somebody didn't like. And then he got beat up and blacklisted. Wow. From the industry. And then I saw that as a kid. You know, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm probably 19, 20 around this still young. stage. Yeah, yeah, still young. Doing my flow thing, just trying to get on no matter what. Like I'm making a go of this skateboard thing and I'm making it happen no matter what. No matter what, anything happens. And then I see this occur and then I realize, oh yeah, this is like, they like control the industry and they uh, literally control who is in or out. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, it's not really that intense now, but if you really take a step back and look at, there are some companies that really do control yeah. the industry yeah, and no, I'm not like, whatever, I'm not even going into like conspiracy theories, but no, it's, it's just fact. like, we have a big company and we're going to push our writers 
And if you're not on our agenda, then you're out. Not just Thrasher. There are other companies that are not in super cahoots with Thrasher, but there are other companies that are the same way. Exactly. And then and then that group starts to do that. And then another group starts to go yeah. there. And then they're kind of rivaling. And then they're doing their own thing. Yeah. And, I, and then I go, so, okay, this is where the story kind of gets like a little wild, right? Yeah. Well, not maybe a little wild, but you, you already know the part where I get kicked off real. Yeah. So I'm literally... I see this guy not see I wasn't there when he got beat up I just know it happened and then I saw his career go from he was the next big thing to nothing literally not he's gone and he'll never be in skateboarding ever again despite his amazing incredible talent but it was a pretty intense thing to see and then I get kicked off real skateboards and I'm starting to see like maybe that wasn't the path I should be on anyways. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, you started kind of seeing behind the curtain. And yeah. you're like, huh, is this where I want to be? Yeah, and I don't want to, like, I'm not like harshing. I love all of these companies. and I'm a skate rat at yeah. heart. And I love that they're pushing skateboarding and I love every little piece of but it. But it's like when they say like, you don't want to meet your heroes. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I'm not, I'm not, not, not going to get into this on your podcast, but like, I have definitely been sorely disappointed by meeting some of my skate heroes. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, I get kicked off real. And when you were saying like you took like all the things that you're thinking, like most people would have given up. I'll be honest. I did give up. Wow. Literally. I was like, my life is over. My career is over. I'll never be a professional skateboarder. And you got to understand, this is right on the back of seeing this dude get beat up. I'm like, what am I going to do? Get beat up? Oh, the other <laughs> thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, oh man. Like, Go ahead, man. They, they would say like, you know, they would call Thrasher Magazine, they would call like it like mafia. They would say like, you know, so when Dennis put me in his car and he drove me, he said, this is what he said to me. He said, welcome to the mafia. Oh shit, yeah, bro. Literally. And I looked fuck? at him, I said, that's not real, right? And he was like, nah, it's just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's some yeah. Illuminati shit, bro. But it's and no, it's just like you know, it's but just yeah, a funny thing of I like know, they're yeah, a yeah. group of skaters. But it is, it is like there, there are these groups of people that kind of do kind of pull the strings. Yeah, and it's like that in many industries. Right. Like, you know, I, I do stuff in music. I've done stuff in skateboarding, and I've seen that on every industry that I've been a part of. Yeah, it is very uh, cutthroat. It's very who you know. Yeah, and it is. If you if someone is not a fan of you, you better hope they're not super connected with the rest of the people that are at the top, because if they're not a fan of you, they're going to try to keep you down. Right. So I, here I am, little kid from Montana, get sponsored by Real, who's also a part of Thrasher magazine. And these two companies are working very closely together. And then I get kicked off of Real. And this is where it's really kind of funny. And then I am very depressed and I take all of my footage that I've been working on and I would I would go into the team manager, Mickey Reyes, every month and I would give him minutes of footage. And anybody who's out there and who's a skateboarder and who's grinding, turn in minutes of footage to your team manager every month. That's like, hard. I dare you. <laughs> like, that is hard. It's a lot. Yeah. You are going for I it. I mean, right? think about it. Like, especially <laughs> at that time frame, people were filming for two years to get to get one three part. minutes yeah so so then i had so a minute a month wow yeah and i was filming for two different video parts if anybody has ever seen seasons number two shout out trevor or mihos um this this other video part which is crazy it was me and mark suchu had a part it was oh, sick. <laughs> yeah so sick I have to go back and look at that. when he was literally it. like probably yay high which wow. is yeah so good he was always super good. Um, anyway, so I was filming for these two videos and then I had all my footage and then I was just like, oh, there's this new website, literally brand new website on the internet called YouTube. I'll just throw it on there. And at that time, so the industry, it's kind of funny because whenever somebody says the industry, the industry doesn't approve of you, Aaron. My answer is who is the industry? Like, tell me who it is. Is it a person? Is it a group of people? Is it like people behind, because I've never met anybody and I've met lots of people in the industry and none of them ever said like, I hate you, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, a lot of them that I meet, they say, we really appreciate what you're doing. But there is, you know, there is like definite haters <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for sure. But you got to imagine 
And I try to put myself in their shoes. Imagine you're running a magazine for 40 plus years. I don't even know. Thrasher is probably 50 years in at this point. Damn. As of right now. That's crazy. Yeah. So they've been they've been running this thing and they've made it they've made a go of it and making a career in skateboarding is hard. I don't care what time period it's not easy. Yeah. So they have held it together by doing whatever means to hold it together that they have. And all of these things really at the end of the day, they're survival factors. Right. So they're just trying to make it. And then they see this kid post footage on YouTube. That video got like 300,000, 400,000, 500. Now at that time I would, that's, that's viral. It was probably the most, watched skateboard video on YouTube. Do you remember the year? Yeah, 2006. It's the first video on my channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to my channel and watch the first video, it starts out with this quote, this emo quote yeah. of me. Literally, the meaning behind it is my life is over. And when there's nothing left, when you have nothing left in your life, just set it on fire. Yeah. And that's what I did. And it was funny because Thrasher Magazine reposted it. And it was on the front page of Thrasher Magazine. Wow. And the next day it had 50,000 views. So I think it's really kind of serendip. It's like an interesting thing because I got kicked off Thrasher and then who made my well, career? You got kicked off of Thrasher. Well, I got kicked off of Real, which is part of Deluxe, which oh, is okay, part okay, of part Thrasher. Of They're all like yeah, it's together. It's all connected. Yeah. It's all connected, right? So I get kicked off the company and then basically I felt like, oh, I got kicked off and then they put my video but, part up. Uh, just, just to kind of expand a little yeah. bit on that. Do you think... As much as they are under the same umbrella, it's very possible that the Thrasher people at Thrasher were not the ones making the decision to cut you at Rio because they have like the sub managers, sub heads of the different brands. Definitely so. different people. But I think like, you know, I think everybody knows all the different scenarios. And there was no like, look, there was no like hard feelings about it. Mm -hmm. it I was like, oh, my life is over. But I wasn't like, Oh, I hate no them. Blame. Or hate th no blame. Yeah. And in fact, I just would recommend if you get into that blame game, it's over for you. Yeah, for sure. You but but take for you, you were you were like, oh, like I got kicked off of a team that's owned by. Yeah. And now in cahoots with this magazine. I mean, that's outside. Like, I would just think that, that that's fucking awesome to be like, OK, 100%. well, you know, I, I brought something at a high caliber that deserved to be on your side and you guys repulsed it. Like, that's fucking sick. Exactly. Yeah. And then part of me was like, am I getting back on? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So they, so they post my video, gets 50,000 views. And then a week now, did later, it have any amount of traction or momentum prior to them posting it? I think it did. Yes. So okay. I think it did. And that's why so that might be the, that's, it, that, so that's probably like, Oh, like this thing's already moving on its own. Yeah. Let's be one of the ones that is like, at the forefront of like, hey, look at look at what's popping. Yeah, this is getting views on its own. Maybe Do you remember how many you got to our before website. them? Hmm, that's a good question. I wanted to say maybe like 20, 30,000. That's I still just, a lot. I just remember, I don't remember if I woke up the next day and there was 50,000 more or 50,000 total. But I remember thinking to myself. But it was a substantial myself, jump. Yeah, I remember thinking to myself. You know what's crazy? You could actually look at the analytics still. Yes. <laughs> It's wild, yeah. you know? So that video, yeah, it ended up, and then a couple weeks later, it was at 350,000. I remember thinking, wow, I'm at the like lowest point in my life, yet I just had the most- Some of the biggest numbers on some YouTube. Some of the biggest numbers- For skateboarding. I've ever seen, you know? And I would go, I would see skaters randomly, and they'd be like, manual dude. Like, you're like, <laughs> you're the manual dude. And I was like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I purposely did very different tricks very weird different tricks and i edited it to music that was like it was essentially you really stood out yeah you stood out because you were like almost like not the norm but still spectacular i really purposely designed it that way with both the music and the editing yeah. and the way the tricks were done and that that's brilliant marketing because like when you're chasing something that hundreds of thousands millions of people are chasing how do you set yourself apart when, yeah. And so <laughs> that style, colors, music, tricks, selection, et cetera, like those are brilliant ways to kind of be like, look what I can do. Right. And definitely set yourself apart because like, let's say everybody on the team is nolly flipping that's 12 that's stairs yeah, and like, you're just going to nolly flip 12 stairs. Yeah. Why but do they other need people you? They like, oh, damn, that. did you see this? Like this, is, I haven't seen this. Yeah. This is sick. Yeah. Exactly. There's so, more of a wow factor. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And people were like, and I think a lot of people that were very into the industry were like, 
we don't know what to make of this. Yeah. Like even the Volcom team manager, I remember him saying, oh, you did the backside shifty flip down the stairs, like skate more stairs. I had maybe two stair tricks in the whole part. <laughs> Everything else is manuals. And he's like trying to say skate more stairs. Yeah. And I'm going, everybody's just skate stairs. Yeah. Do I want to just do what everybody else is doing? Probably should have, probably would have made me. <laughs> if you are that entertaining or that good at some aspect that you can do a whole part on, like why not? Yeah, I remember Chris Cole saying in this interview, he's like, I can do a lot of tricks down ledges, but does anybody want to see me do tricks on ledges? Mm -hmm. Or do they want to see me jump down handrails and stairs? And then he went all handrails and stairs, probably made his whole career, mm -hmm. you know? Just that one thing. Yeah. But I just think it's a very interesting point that he made. Also, during this time period, there's a lot of other, other skaters who have very, you know, they dress a certain way, and then they start getting into the industry and get sponsors and they completely change the way they dress. Mm -hmm. It's a marketing tool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just found it's that almost like a uniform. Yeah. So I happening. Yeah. But I feel like it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Like, is that like a natural thing? Like you grow up as, as a skateboarder and you think you just have to be good at skateboarding. And then you get into the industry, you find out it's not about just being good at skateboarding. You have to be market it yourself. You have to be able to communicate. Yeah. And that's what then. So, okay, so we're getting into this know, whole yeah, thing, yeah. <laughs> but you have this, this company who is running things and then this kid randomly all of a sudden is blowing up on YouTube and creating this whole thing for himself as a business entity. That's a threat to this. Now, when you started off, you did your first videos. That was this, was this YouTube channel. Yeah. Was it originally Braille or just Aaron Cairo? Good question. It was called Sprocker 7 because oh, really? my, yeah. I, I didn't even know that at all. If you're a real long time subscriber, you know Sprocker 7. So my snowboard team growing up in Montana, we were called Team Sprock and I was uh, number seven. So it was called Sprocker 7. It's gotcha. like a, my crew. So Sprocker 7 starts blowing up. Sprocker 7 starts blowing up. Off of these two video parts you posted on there. Yeah. And what and, was the next upload? Yeah. I don't even know what the next upload was, but in my, where I was at, like in my, like what I'm doing yeah, in my you're life. Not, you're seeing this momentum. Yeah. How do you, what was your thought to capitalize on that? Yeah. I got to get a new sponsor. So then I get on Bueno Skateboards. <laughs> bueno Skateboards lasts about three months and then they kick me off. Wow. Out of the blue. No, nothing. Didn't even tell me why. That's crazy. Yeah. I went down to LA and I skated with the team manager and then I went back and then he just stopped giving me boards. There was a rumor that like, you know, I couldn't ollie high enough or something, which, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm a manual dude, whatever. It's fine. So at this point, you're blowing up on YouTube, which yeah. is kind of unheard of at the time. Oh, this is even like a little, this is later, right? Okay. So I had that one video go, Yeah. but I didn't like, I had that one video go, but it meant literally nothing. It, Cause it didn't open any doors for you. None. It just got views. It got views. And I'm pretty sure it did help me get on Bueno, but then I just got kicked off. So it's right. in the same place. Yeah. So it really took me nowhere. Right. And then YouTube started its partnership program mm. and started to pay on AdSense. And one of my friends said, do you know you can make money on YouTube? I said, shut up. That's not real. YouTube just ran an internet website. And they said, yeah, you make videos and they put ads on them and you make money. And I thought to myself, well, I've only had one video. It has 350,000 views. Maybe I could do that. And then I started making videos. And interestingly enough, I'm all, I love statistics and I love analyzing statistics and why things work and the reason behind things. So I made tons of videos. I made clip of the week, just skate clips. You know, I had clips of Mark Suchu. I had clips of all my friends, some crazy footage actually. And I would just put them up. And then I also made some tutorials and I made how to kickflip the easiest way tutorial. And that got 4 million views. And then I went, there I it is. Do tutorials. Yep. And then I realized there's like a real big gap in this industry. Who's teaching skateboarding? Yeah. Nobody. There, there were like, I remember like in the early 2000s, stuff like that, there were like VHS tapes of like some, some small, but it wasn't capitalizing on what was now happening with, with YouTube yeah. and easy ease of access. Right. Before it was still like, you have to go buy a trick tip tutorial video at a skate shop and only you're watching it on like a player. <laughs> But yeah. like now YouTube's out here. That was brilliant that you saw that you paid attention to the analytics. Yeah. Because sometimes people just post up so many videos and just trying to see what sticks. But like when you start really looking at numbers and like you can see yeah. easily like, okay, this is a there's there's a pattern here. Right. Capitalize on that. 
Exactly. So then I just went, okay, well, let me post a bunch of tutorials. And then it was just boom, 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 up. boom. And then it took that like, you know, the 350,000 views was great. But now I'm getting views. Now, with all these videos you're throwing in, you're pretty much throwing a bunch of darts. See what sticks. Literal. Just still Sprocket 7? No. Change it to Braille. What okay. was, what, why yeah. Braille? Good question. So I... You know, I'm this kid and I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do? And I'm just kicked off all my sponsors and I'm valet parking cars is my job. And I'm just trying to figure out how do I make a business out of this? And another thing that I saw in the industry that was heartbreaking to me was my friends who were making skate videos, the two videos that I was working on, Seasons and Mihos, they would make the full video and then they would pay the DVDs for themselves and they would take it to the skate spot. And they would literally be like, hey, do you want to buy a DVD? Mm. And I was like, this is, this sucks. <laughs> like there's got to be a better way to sell yeah, DVDs. Yeah. And then I, I realized the internet is like a thing that's happening now. Right. Like it's hard for people to understand like the generation now that grew up with the internet. Because it's there. It's hard to understand. But it was a it was not giant there. transition. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was a new movement. It and literally it, it, it changed even, the world. And there was... In the beginning, people didn't really understand like how much you can use it. Right. So then I had this idea to sell the digital downloads of their videos. And then I was like, I have to name this something. I have to start a website and it has to have a name. And I literally went through, maybe I'll call it Toast. I was like, it has to be something random. And then I was like, Braille it could be interesting. And then I was like, Do you remember oh. any reason why Braille? Or yeah. Just- the reason why is because the saying in skateboarding, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling this board. I'm feeling this uh, spot. I'm feeling this trick. And so then I was like, that has like kind of like a good vibe to it. Like, like just yeah. have fun. And, and also, you know, later then all the tutorials and I feel like it's a play on words, right? I'm feeling it. And Braille means like yeah. you're literally yeah, you feeling feel it. feel it to read it. Yeah. Yeah. So then... But I'm feeling it means like I'm having fun. I'm enjoying this. Right. And I've gone through personal hell in the skateboard industry. Right. And so now I have this idea of like, well, let's just make it fun. Like what? We started skateboarding because it was yeah. fun. We started skateboarding because we did an ollie over a hose and we got so excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, how could we share that with somebody else? Right. And then I was like, okay, at this time, what Braille was, was me trying to sell the digital downloads and my friend's videos. Oh, wow. And that's what it was. I had this website. I literally took a picture of like a concrete slab and the background was concrete. I thought the site was so sick. Even today, I still think it's pretty sick, yeah. right? Um, and I would I put their videos on this old janky place where you could download. I think it was you downloaded it as like an MP3 video file or something crazy. At the time... I don't even think MP4 was out. So probably MP2. Yeah, like MP2. something something like yeah, that. Because MP3 is audio. So there's like, MP, yeah, some it, MPEG video. And it was like this old like site that was like, I had to pay monthly to put the videos on yeah. there. And then the download was through my, it was like, <laughs> I, I thought I was like a computer wizard or something. <laughs> Made this site myself. Just learning everything as I go. Yeah. Always did that. And then, and then the YouTube videos start popping off. The tutorials start popping off. And then I just went like, I had my light bulb moment and yeah. I just found this is where I belong. Yeah. If you want to say like, here's an industry and what is the industry? Like if there is an industry, which in my personal opinion, the industry is a bunch of kids that found a toy <laughs> and they use that toy and they think it's fun Yeah. and they learn tricks on it Yeah. and nobody's teaching them that. And I feel like I can do that well. Yeah. And so then I just took that and ran with it. Sick. And that's what just blew up Braille. Yeah, that was, it, it that blew was a, up Braille. That was catalyst for all the subscribers, the views and stuff like that. And then, yeah. and then you get started branching into more creative aspects, right? Yeah, which is a whole nother story. Yeah. You want me to tell that story? Uh, if you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's an interesting one. Okay, yeah. so you got to understand like also my background, I come from this like hardcore skating background and I'm like, you know, in the skating world, there's certain... You don't do Benny Hanna's, you know. <laughs> you yeah, know. You, yeah, you hit streets that they're like they're like these unwritten rules yes. for what you can put as a part clip and yes, things like that. You yeah. cannot you can't have a part clip at a skate park. There's all kinds of rules, right? And so then I'm making these videos and the tutorials and they're doing well. And then I meet this kid named Lance and he is an editor and he starts editing my videos. Then one day he's at this like, point you're already making money off the AdSense. Making money off the AdSense. So, yes. I don't really like to get into like 
specific numbers with people's money. But Go at ahead. this point, back in the day, AdSense was paying kind of high because and, and not everyone's getting paid. So there was like a good amount of money being being dished out to, well, to YouTubers. Well, I'll tell you what it was for me. Okay. So I start making videos and then I start... So I had the first video, then this is probably years later. I mean, if somebody really analyzed my channel, you could everything's there, all the data, all yeah. the numbers. I think it was maybe four years later before I started going, I'm going to actually try to do this as a career. So were you still doing like another job or still doing like- Yes, what? valet. You were still while yes. it was popping off on YouTube. Uh, well, we're not even there oh, popping off oh, on YouTube, okay, okay, but okay. I'll tell you, okay. I'll tell you the whole run. So I start making videos. Um, I'm working valet and then I start making videos and I try to do one a week and one a week is a struggle. And yeah. even I'm literally just posting clips, yeah. like a literal clip that I already have and I call it a clip of the week. And then I start making, it took me a full year. So AdSense doesn't pay out until you make $100. Yeah, that's the threshold. Yeah, that's the threshold. And then after that, it's every month. If once a month, if you hit the 100. It, you have month, to hit 100. Yeah, so right? if you make 25 bucks, like you get paid out 100 bucks. And yes. then the next month you make 25, then you have to wait till you hit the other 75. That's right. Yeah. So, so it took me a full year of grinding as hard as I possibly could to get $100. Wow. Yeah. And then the next month I made $100. So back to back. That's right. Okay, so you went from a whole year, 12 months yeah. to make $100. Yes. And then one month later, you generate $100. That's right. Sick. And then the next- That's and exponential. Then it is exponential. But you, we have to understand my mindset too. I was like, I'm at the bottom of the barrel as like as low as you can go. Yeah. And then I make a video and I remember seeing it said, you made two cents. And I thought to myself, two cents? I am stoked. <laughs> Because two cents, I can just that repeat means, this. I yeah. can do this. Yep. The more videos, the more two cents. Yeah, exactly. And it just accumulates. Exactly. So if you if you go like, well, how long did it take? It took me a full year to make $100. Can you live off $100 in a year? No. Hell no. You know, especially not now. That's like one can of soda <laughs> and a burrito. You're $100 you deep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it took me one year, made $100. Then my next month made $100. And it started going exponential. And then I was working valet like five days a week. And then I was making more money on the videos than four days a week, three days a week, two days a week, one day a week, no valet. Yeah. That's what I did. So, and the valet company was cool enough to let me do one day a week. Wow. You know, not a lot of companies would do that. No, they're like, if you can't be here the times that we need you, bye. Yeah, bye. And I remember telling my wife, you know, I'm thinking about quitting my job. So at this point, you're already married. Yeah. Thinking about quitting my job. And she says, you better not do that. You crazy. <laughs> In fact, it was a two hour. She hates it. I bring this up all the time. Yeah. I'm sorry, baby. I, you, I'm sorry if you watch this. <laughs> but she ripped me. She ripped into me. Uh, and I just want people to understand because like, it's not going to be like, like, I feel like now I'm in this position where I'm, you know, doing my videos and whatever. And I feel like people look at me and they think, oh, you came from money and you just made money, and everybody in your life is supportive, and what a great life you have. Every overnight success is 10 years in the making. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. yeah. You, these people are grinding, and I see the skaters now, like Lamont Holt, like he has been grinding, mm -hmm. and now he's like blowing up oh, on TikTok, TikTok and yeah. I think it is so sick. Yeah. And you gotta understand, you he gotta has like been going that through that persistence it. of like all the struggles, all the you know the ups and downs. But like you keep going, you keep going, you, yeah. you keep going, you keep finding a way. And then when you find that way, it's like, running. yeah. And there's this meme that I also think about all the time, where there's like two people digging, and one person is like inches away from diamonds, and he stops and yeah, gives it, up. it shows them like yeah. one on each side going like both at an angle down. Yeah, and then one stops, quits. Yeah, and. Like right there, yeah. right before it's there. How many people quit and just give up and they would have just, they were right there. But going through what you have to go through, it's, it's, hell. it's, it's literal hell. hell. Yeah. I mean, Elon Musk says, you want to start a company? I'll tell you what it's like. It's like chewing broken glass. Yeah. And I can tell you, I can attest to that. It is chewing broken glass. Yeah. And now, you know, now it's like I have a company, I have employees, I have so much other stuff to deal with. They have broken glass skateboards. <laughs> <laughs> Literal. It's like now you get to skate broken glass. Yeah, it is tough and yeah. you have to know a lot. And that's the other thing we were talking about earlier about like you can focus on one thing, get really good at it, be super professional. But if you're going to make a career out of that, 
you better know that thing. You better know accounting. You better know marketing. Them, yeah. You better know, you know, you got to know your business. Yeah, it's uh, being great at the craft is bare minimum. Right. Like, you, that's, you, that's a bare minimum. You, that's a requirement. Right. There's a lot of people One who are of great. <laughs> many requirements. Yes. You got to do so much more. And uh, I think that's amazing, man, that you were able to be persistent. Yeah. Continue. Eat all the shit that you had to eat and keep getting up. Keep going. Yeah. And grind your ass off. It, there's so much sacrifice in that. Yeah. That a lot of people like will give up. And one of the keys is persistence. Like that's right. probably one of the biggest. Is like just keep going, and eventually, if you continue to innovate, study analytics, find a way yeah. of what's working, what's not, and adapt. But you just keep going. Like doors will start to open for you because you are getting better. You're learning more, and you're applying yourself in more ways to right. really stand out a, a, amongst the crowd. And yeah, you've been able to do that in uh, man such a humongous way. I mean, I, it's such like. It, it's like where I'm at right now, man. When I look at the thing, this is awesome, bro. This yeah. is so sick. But yeah, it was it was more struggle than success for many, 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 many years. Yeah, and even this, even the warehouse is kind of an interesting thing. From an analysis YouTube statistical viewpoint, my views dropped the second I walked into this place. Wow. Yeah, think about like, is the audio in here good? No, it's terrible. Right. Right? And in the videos, like, you have this echo and now we're confined to this space. And part of what built Braille skateboarding was like being in a skate park with random people. Mm, like, like, oh, the, now I'm bringing a snowboard and I'm putting trucks in the snowboard. How are the people in the skate park gonna react? It's like right, part of the video. Yeah. And now we have this closed, confined space. Stuff I think about all the time. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, cause this offers so much freedom, yeah. but there are limits with it. Yeah. 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 And you know what? That, I mean, that's with anything though. Cause realistically, like, if you look at it on the flip side, let's say you did only videos at a skate park, at some point, it's like, man, I, I need a more confined space to, to do light things thing. on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. are some things you can't yeah. do at a skate but, park. I mean, everything kind of mm -hmm. almost has a catch 22 yeah. when you reach a level of greatness. Yeah. There's, there's nothing really that's like everything can be done with this one way. Right. Um, right. Exactly. So then that takes us back into this industry that is very much so this is the way you do it. There's a very certain way that you become sponsored, am, and then pro. You have to have, there's like a checklist. Yeah. You have to have pictures in the magazine. You have to have these types of video parts. You know, you have to be coming up in a very certain way. And we okay who becomes a pro. Right. And then we have these goofy guys on the internet and they just start their own company and they just put their names on the board. Yeah. Which yeah, yeah. is kind of an, it's a totally separate thing. So am I going to receive hate from that? Tons and yeah, tons. Because, because you were able to create something in skateboarding without having to go through the industry. That's right. You were able to create this, this level of success, this level of uh, fan base, as well as sales. The right. products that you guys sell, I, I don't know the, the, the exact numbers, but I'm pretty aware that you guys sell some of the most amount of skate product in the world. It's a good question. I literally have no idea. I don't think that we do, but I have no clue. You yeah. know what I mean? So there's also to explain, and a lot of people confuse me with Andy Schrock. So Andy Schrock is, he owns Revive Skateboards mm. and he has a similar warehouse that he painted red. I think it's like a good defining factor. Yeah. Mine is blue, his is red. Mine is in the Oakland Bay Area, is is in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, and his is in Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And so I am sponsored by his brand. As Revive. a skateboarder. As a skateboarder, yes. So, you know, it's kind of funny because I like, I grew up a traditional industry like way, like I'm going to go pro in a certain way. And, you know, they did make me pro for Revive Skateboards. I think I literally have like 28 pro graphics, which is crazy. Wow. <laughs> I know. That's amazing. I know. It's a lot. No, no. Quick question before we dive in more into yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So you start Braille. Yeah. You're popping off on YouTube. What came first? You making Braille skateboards or Revive Skateboards sponsoring you? Good question. So Braille skateboarding, which is all about teaching content. people, and that's what we do. We make videos, we teach people, even the content, even the weird boards. I just, this is my whole strategy. Use the weird boards to bring new people into skateboarding 
And then those people see I the tutorials. They hit the damn tutorials and then learn. Yeah. And I'm trying to take a new person who is never interested in skateboarding, see a video, go, they're having fun. I need to have fun in my life. Maybe I should start skateboarding. My answer is yes, you should. Doesn't matter. Here how are old you all are. your videos to watch. Here are all the videos. Yeah. And now we're going to give you a high quality skateboard to use at a good price. Did you start sell making Braille skateboards first or did you get sponsored by Revive? Yeah. So sponsored by Revive was way earlier. Okay. Like I got sponsored by Revive when I was at probably 3,000 subs. Okay. Braille, the YouTube channel, is yeah. creating content. Yeah. Here comes Revive. And yeah. like, hey man, like we want to sponsor you. We make boards. Yeah. We want to sponsor you. Yeah. So Re Revive, which used to be called Revenge, mm -hmm. and it was off of a video series that Andy Strock was making called We Want Revenge. And it was him with his friends and they're just making literal like we're just going out and having fun. Doesn't even matter if the tricks are good or bad. We're literally just having fun. Mm -hmm. And he was blowing up on YouTube. He was the first one that was like, he's like a skateboard YouTuber. Mm -hmm. And I saw that and I was like, so sick. Yeah. And then I sent him my sponsor me video because I'd been kicked off and everything. And then he was like, you're on. <laughs> like my yeah. video was good. Yeah. And then he was like, you're instantly on. And I was the first one that was not part of his friend group that he put on the team. And this is again, after you're already building momentum on your YouTube channel. Yeah, and also now I'm part of Andy Schrock's crew, which also helped me a lot. Like you you, you see how that- Yeah, yeah, work. yeah, because the, the momentum they had yes. funneled more into you. Yes, and, and then it was like, I'm bringing new people into skateboarding and he's selling boards. And then it's just like this perfect like union and yeah. he, Andy's such a good, he's such a good dude. Now, I'm, to be honest, I'm not too familiar with Revive on, uh, on like social media stuff. So they have a YouTube channel where they pump out a bunch of content as well? Yeah, Andy has more views than any, like he's like really? beyond the beyond wow. of anybody. So now a lot of his videos are with his son. So he'll do like father-son skateboard cool. video, father-son awesome. miss. And his father-son videos are just Crazy. Wow, that's amazing. Amazing, amazing. So then you get sponsored. Yeah. Now, is there a conflict of interest when you decide to make your own skateboards? Yes. Yeah. With him or with who? Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, like, I love and appreciate Are you Revive. Still part, you're still part of Revive? 100%. It's, so, okay, so, so it's a how very did, okay. weird scenario. So I'll, how did that go? <laughs> so I'd be like, bro, you skate for me. You're going to go sell other boards. Like, what yeah. the hell? That's what it's like. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll explain how it <laughs> yeah, all occurred. Yeah. So I get on Revive, they turn me pro. I made three, four, several video parts with them, full length videos. This, yes, sir. Yeah. We're doing our own thing, right? And then my I'm running Braille. Yeah. And I'm selling blanks because I'm getting new people into skateboarding. And I'm just like, I just want them to have the ability to get a skateboard. Yeah. And if, if you're facilitating content, now here are the tools for you to. Do it yourself. Yeah, it has to be kind of like the whole it's nine a, it, yards. The machine. It's got to be yeah. a machine in order to, to really go at the level that you guys are at. Yeah. So it's interesting because now and now I have employees, which not everybody goes the employee route. It's an interesting thing. But now I have employees that are running my shop yeah. and I'm pushing them to figure out marketing, figure out sales. You guys got to run this and it's got to like do its own really thing. Really be a whole business. Real, Really be a whole business. And they keep telling me, can we put our logo on the boards? And I, no, we cannot. We cannot put our logo on the boards because we're not a skateboard company. We're a skateboarding company. Because you're part of Revive. Yes. Now, when you're selling just blanks, does Revive have an issue? No, we right ask there, them. Cool. Everything I do before, That's I ask cool. them. I say, Andy, do you mind if I do this? He says, no. Nah. And we're selling Revive boards too. Yeah. Right? So those... Braille is selling. Braille is selling Revive skateboards through our shop. Okay. And still to this day, we do, right? Sick. So then my employees are the ones that start pushing on me really hard. Aaron, Braille skateboards. Aaron, Braille skateboards. You need it. You need yeah. it. Da, 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 da. And then I'm at this toy fair in New York City and Andy Schrock is there. And my one of my employees, her name is Devin. She's like, talk to Andy about the boards right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, Andy, ah, this very uncomfortable thing. I don't really want to even talk about it, but we've been thinking about maybe doing Braille skateboards. And Andy, like I say, is the best dude ever. He literally says, I've been wondering when you were going to ask me that question, you know? And then he says, we got to talk to Brian. So Revive Skateboards is Andy Schrock and Brian Ames. They're running this and they're both amazing, awesome dudes. So then we get on this video call 
And they, I think, and uh, it's a video call to talk about what are we going to do? How does this, how do you work it out? How do we work it out? What does it look like? How does it all work? Yeah. Cause like, that's a major conflict of interest on the business side of like, I'm supposed to be the, f one of the faces to help sell your company's yeah. boards, but now I'm going to make boards that are not technically co competition, but our competition fully. Yeah. 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 And it's interesting looking back, we'll see 10 years from now, we'll be able to look back and analyze all the data and we'll be able to take a look at it and see, was that the right move or not? Yeah. I don't even know right now if well, it was the right move. Beyond that of like the, the, the numbers in total on a business standpoint, it's completely the right move for Braille. Yeah. Maybe it might be, who knows for Aaron Cairo and, and the revive dynamic, but for Braille, that's a must. You have to have your own products and your own merch. Yeah. So we do this video meeting and I get on the meeting and I, I can tell Brian is just pissed. <laughs> he is so mad. He's heated. And uh, then I just said, I don't want to leave Revive. Literal, like for like, hey, how you doing? Fine. You know, like pissed. And then I said, look, I just want you guys to understand you guys have helped me out a lot. And I don't, I got kicked off of real. I was at the lowest point in my life and then revenge picked me up. It was like a small shining light. They revived you. Literal. And at that time it was called revenge. So it yeah, was yeah. more like we're getting revenge, <laughs> you know, it was yeah, like, yeah. and then it turned to revive. And I thought that's a little nicer. We're reviving. <laughs> <laughs> so then I told Brian, I don't want to leave revive skateboards. Yeah. And then he instantly said, okay, I love it do whatever you want. Whatever skateboard company you want to do, just do it. As long as you're not leaving because you were the first person we put on who wasn't part of our group of friends and it was really meaningful for us. And I was like, honestly, it was really meaningful for me. It changed my entire life. Even my team writers today, they ask me all the time, why don't you leave Revive and why don't you just skate for Braille? It's that, like, it's a personal thing. Bro, that is such a stand-up thing for you to do to not bail on the people that helped you at that point. I, that's uh, very admirable and I respect the hell out of that because most people wouldn't do that. Right. And uh, I think it's grimy that most people wouldn't try to find a way to st still work with someone even though you're trying to build your own thing. Right. So for you to stick with them and be like, no, I'm still going to be here because you could have easily just been like, I'm out. I have, I can make so much money just off the Braille boards alone. Right. I don't need this for money. But it's it was about the mutual respect, about the love and the the care that they gave you yeah, and you seeing that through and staying with them. That, that's a beautiful thing, man. And uh, mad props on that, bro. Cause like, <laughs> like, well, like I don't, I feel like there are like a lot of selfish people in this world, especially in the skate industry. Yeah. That care more about themselves than about the collective. And yeah, I've dealt with that too a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I've been on the, on the uh, receiving end of that griminess, bro. It's, it's so shady. And uh, I hope people just like really see, like that, that the moral and principles for you to, to stay with, stay loyal. Yeah. Um, I th more people should, should do stuff like that because there are also, aside from it just being like the right thing to do, like there are a lot of positives that come from that. Yeah. And I'm sure there have been some positives still that have flourished because of that relationship staying intact. Right. And at the end of the day, when you put your head on that pillow, you got to, you can sleep comfortably. Yes. Like, you know we're still I mean? good. I'm going to go like, these people probably literally saved my life. If I didn't get on that company right then, would I have been able to make all these videos and mm, carry forward? Yeah. Would I have a channel at all without yeah. Andy Schrock? No. So what am I going to do? Build Braille skateboarding and just leave it? Yeah, man. That's amazing. Sponsored by Revive. Yeah. As a skater. Yeah. But then Braille has its own skate company that you are not sponsored by. That's right. You sponsor other skaters. Yes. Yeah. Um. That's fucking awesome though, bro. Like just like the the like that homie type, the family vibe of yeah. like, hey man, like we could build together. Yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, then Braille has whatever influence online and social media and we're doing our thing. And then now we bring in skaters. And I, you know, it it there's very interesting dynamics. Yeah. And skaters these days, they're trying to build their own thing too. Yeah. And it starts to get there's all kinds of conflicts of interest. Yeah. You see, it starts to get That's very tough. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is tough. But I think like if if people can maintain that open communication yeah. and that like sincerity of like, hey, this is something I want to do. Or, right. Hey, like, how would this work if this came about? Yeah, how do we all work out this thing together and push forward and keep it moving? Because I firmly believe that there's enough money and enough uh, 
attention to be given that multiple companies, many companies, all companies can thrive together, even if, okay, this one person bought this skateboard instead of this skateboard this month, they might buy the other skateboard the next month. Or at bare minimum, if this content and everyone knows that they're part of like, still like in, you know, they make appearances on each other's videos or they have like this good camaraderie. Yeah. Like they're going to watch the other content also. Yeah. And they're going to watch your content and his content. And then his content is going to bring people to your content. And then you just build together. Yeah. I firmly believe you can definitely thrive together without it being me and only me. Exactly. And I talk to my employees about this all the time. I think, okay, we got 5.7 million subscribers on YouTube. You guys think that's a lot? How many people are in the world? Eight billion. Eight billion. Yeah, there's that so many more nothing. to bring. And we're going to go in this, this thing about skateboarding is it's super small. Yeah. People don't totally understand how small it is. Yeah. It's a very, very small industry. This is not the music industry. Yeah. But it's, it's, there's so much room to grow. Yeah. So you have these very small companies. Any, the biggest skateboard company in the world is classified as a small business. If you just look at the numbers, right? What is like a not small business, 200 plus employees? Does anybody have over 200 employees? I hope not. I, I, <laughs> I don't. I mean, not that I hope not. I just yeah. don't think so. Right. But I, I just think to myself, I'm running 200 employees. I've gotten up to 30 employees. It is tough, bro. Yeah. Tough. But yeah, I think it's very interesting. But I, it's, it's also an interesting facet because you have these small businesses all fighting and trying to take each other down and at each other's The, the way I see what I've seen in the skate industry, it's extremely crabs in a bucket. Yeah. Extremely. As soon as one starts up, you try to pull them down. Totally. And they all stay at the bottom of the damn bucket. <laughs> I know. You fools. Like, <laughs> I know. So it's kind of interesting because I've been in this, like one, I really love cliche skateboards. Mm -hmm. And I love Joey Brzezinski. Yeah. I love his manual tricks. And yep. cliche was like, I thought their videos were so sick. Yeah. And then they went out of business, broke my damn heart. Yeah. And then I felt like I'm not doing my job well enough because my job is to bring enough new people in so none of those companies go out of business. Right. And those companies can talk trash on me all day and hate me and say, Aaron Cairo sucks. He's this, that, and the other thing. And Braille skateboarding this. And I don't even care. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing or doing my best to try and do that to bring new people yeah. in. And I could literally save their business just by the fact of how many people Come I brought into skateboarding. Into skateboarding. Of what you guys and do, they're yeah. going to buy those boards. And I don't even, what am I going to like feel bad that they hate me? No, I just have to keep doing what I'm doing. And that's the, that's like the key. Man, it's like the big picture is more important. Yeah. And most people, especially in skateboarding are like, small picture just right right now right now right now it, it makes me think of like elon musk i feel like elon musk is is like that type of mindset he's like he cares more about the collective more about the the big picture than himself right and he's always i feel like getting attacked by the media getting attacked by other companies and he still goes like no humanity is more important right. how do i help humanity right and like i see that with you in, in skateboarding like how do i help skateboarding right Fuck all the bullshit. Skateboarding. Right. For skateboarders. And imagine, just imagine if everybody just stopped hating on each other and pushing each other down. If we just went, guys, let's work together to grow skateboarding. Dude, we could double, triple the size of skateboarding is so Easy. small. Easy. It would grow that much because as it is, like there's so many new people coming in thanks to you and a lot of other people on YouTube. Um, there's like this really big, bigger than ever do I see more people coming into skateboarding. Yeah. And yeah, instead of like, creating this tension Animosity. and these walls with each other it's like that's not helping anybody right yeah yeah it's so interesting and and now that i'm more part of the in i sort of consider myself not really part of the industry because i want to just do my own thing and I, i'm trying i would to i would things. word it that you are independently part of the industry <laughs> there you go yeah but now it's like you know, the owner of NHS will like shoot an email over and I'll, you know, get some information about the things that are occurring in the industry. And I happen to know that the numbers in 2002 were the highest they ever were. And they've been going down ever since. Yeah, We had a spike in 2016, which I think is very interesting. I've been meaning to make a video about this Yeah, and I will, but it's kind of in 2016, I don't know if you know what happened. I don't. 2016 was a very interesting year because it was the year that Rihanna and some of these big celebrities started wearing Thrasher. 
Oh, and wow. you know how much yeah, yeah. we as skaters like, you know, there's that whole thing. There you go. The do skate, not wear skaters sk are territorial. Yeah, do not wear Thrasher if you do not uh, skateboard. Skate. <laughs> but that blew skateboarding up. Yeah, we had Tony Hawk Pro Skater, which blew it up, and that was like the impetus of like what we have now. Yeah. And then, you know, what do we have to compete with as skateboarding? We're competing with Minecraft, and it was it was interesting. We yeah. just went to do tour. And we are live streaming Due Tour on our channel. So we're looking at all of the 30 plus channels that Due Tour is live streaming on and going, it's very interesting because look at these numbers. And then you go, okay, what do we have? Like 3,000 concurrent people watching or something like that. And then we go, let's compare this to what we're competing with. You go to Twitch, pull up some random kid in his room, not even some famous kid, 64,000 concurrent viewers watching this kid play Minecraft. Yeah. Think about that. That's madness. Yeah, that's and we think, well, we're in this skateboard industry, so hip, so cool. Is like yeah. Minecraft trumps <laughs> in anything <laughs> yep, yep. that we've ever been close to. You know, but uh, we need to work together to grow it like 100%. that. I love skateboarding so, so much, but I'm not territorial about it. Like it can't be cool. Yeah. Like if if I don't care if someone is not good at skateboarding, but if they like I remember when Lil Wayne would get a bunch of shit, but it's like when you would see him or hear him talk on interviews about skateboarding, there's genuine passion about the love that he has for skateboarding. Right. It doesn't matter if he's not doing great tricks. Nobody like, cares. No, no, well, but like the skaters yeah. online. Did they hate. care? Oh, yeah, no. bro. There was so much hate. Really? Yeah. And see, it's like, that, that's why I kind of, and then I sort of start to distance myself and go like, I just don't want to be involved in Who cares? Right? To me, I was like, bro, Little Wayne, come play a game of skate at the Braille House. We love you. Yeah, bro. They're like these hardcore, like extremists in yeah. skateboarding, uh, the, the, like online. Yeah, I know. And, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, this is separate from the industry. Like, there are definitely a bunch of haters in the industry. Yes. But then, and a lot of these fans are so territorial with skateboarding like nah it's gotta be like super underground it can't be pop culture can't have these cool shoes wearing and these uh, music artists and these pop culture people that don't really can't even do a kickflip they can't be having a skate bro if it gets more people into skateboarding and then that's part of what ends up adding to Olympics and right. then now being televised on a big major channel instead of just on an app. You know, like those are all things that push skateboarding forward. Like, why would you not? Like, right. I want more skateboarding. I don't right. get like tired of skateboarding. So bring, like if these things help, let it help. Yeah. And so there becomes this viewpoint of if we get more people into skateboarding, that ruins skateboarding. And I think, wait, what? If you wanted to be, if you're a kid and you want to have a career in skateboarding, you only have a career if people buy your board. That's it. <laughs> if you're not selling boards, you're done. Yeah. Like Rodney Mullen, he even literally lost his pro model board because they weren't selling. And then he went and he's like, I'm going to take my freestyle tricks, take it to the street. You can watch his video. He talks all about it. And then he has a board again. Yeah. But that's just what it is. Yeah. But you could sell boards only if there's skaters to sell them too. Yeah. So that it, you're more like, skaters mean more customers you're for literally the dream and the passion. Yeah. Killing your own thing that you say you love. Yeah. So then I challenge that it's and I like go, Do you actually love it? Yeah. Because I don't think so. Yeah. I think you and just I think love like, it for yourself. And the, the unfortunate thing is to a lot of these haters, these these extremists, they are the minority. There's still way more people that are more accepting of skateboarding. But the the haters, the extremists, they're louder on social media. Oh yeah. So always, you can have like a, like <laughs> less comments, less like if you look at the like, especially a lot of videos that get ha hate on. Yeah. You'll see way more likes. Yeah. But the comments are so negative. Ninety eight percent positive likes. Or likes. Yeah, that's like a very common. It's like two percent dislikes, ninety eight percent likes. Then you go to the comments section. But the comments are like flooded with hate bro <laughs> like you've got your whole crew in there to just brrr. bro. when I, I did this uh video where i took the sounds of the skateboard and i flipped them and i made them a hip-hop beat and i overwhelmingly positive likes and comments but the there were a bunch of comments that were t talking shit yeah and then <laughs> what i did was i wrote back to everybody yeah and uh even the shit and half not even half Literally 90% of everyone I wrote back to, yeah. just to like giving my perspective of why I did how the beat, how I did it, yeah. et cetera. 
oh, like they ended up being super cool yeah. and changed their whole mind. But it's just That's like some of these people, they all they want to do is be heard. And the only way they think they can be heard is if they talk shit, which yes. is stupid. It's like, bro, chill the fuck out, I guys. see that all the time. Somebody <laughs> says, you're this, you're that, you're the other thing, you're blah. And then I go like, hey, bro, thanks for writing a comment. I really appreciate it. Much love. And then I go to their profile and like some pictures. And then they say, oh, thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm really sorry. I even had one kid say, my account got hacked and that wasn't me. And I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> that was fully you, but wow. it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's okay. okay. It's, okay. <laughs> it, it's an interesting thing, you know? Bro, so, that's hilarious. So there yeah. you go. It's yeah, like man. a little thing, skateboard industry. It's a wild place. Man, I just got to commend you on being able to not, again, not only get up on those times in your life when you were struggling and you kept going, but also too, like now at this position you're in, which is a lot of people can just see like, oh, they're a huge success and that's it. So you still have a lot of this bullshit you deal with, a lot of the hate, a lot of the these other people in the industry trying to suppress and still keep Braille down, which is like hurdles and challenges that I'm sure affect you to this day. Every day. Yeah, I feel like it's literally a thing where it's kind of like, oh, like we're cool and they're not cool. And it's also, it's almost like trying to become like a thing to be, don't like them. And that's the cool like thing. Like if you don't like them, that's cool. And if you do like them, like, ah, oh, you're like, you're shun. whack. Yeah, you're whack. You know what it reminds me of? It remind, and this is like not in skateboard, but like Gary V. Yeah. G Gary V is an incredible entrepreneur. A lot of his content is like very positive and it's like a lot of people that hate on him are like he's corny, isn't that like this dude's literally doing good shit for the world. Yeah. Like and speaking good things to people. Right. And in motivating, inspiring, but you're just gonna shit on him. And it's cool to hate on Gary Vee. Or yeah. even like with Eminem, they do that. It's cool to hate on Eminem. It's like, what? Why? Yeah. It's and so you, stupid. You have to remember, I always have to keep this in mind and have like an interesting story behind this too, is like there are some people that want you to do well. And there are other people that just really don't. And if they can tear you down, that's what they're working on doing yeah. every single day. I had this, okay, so I did this video. We do this video series where we give away a board. We go to a skate park and we find the kid who has the worst board. It's called Worst Board at the Park. And then we say, do a trick. He does a trick, we give him the board. Doesn't matter if it's an ollie, shove it. And this one kid had just a crap board and he does a 50-50 down the hubba and I give him the board. And in the video, he didn't say thank you. I actually think he did thank me, but I don't think we filmed it and I don't think it was in the video. And the comments were roasting him. And it was one of those scenarios where it was like 99.7% positive views. Likes. And then the comments were supposedly like hating on him. And his mom sent an email and said, please take the video down. And I said, I completely understand. My son, she said, my son would like to be a professional skateboarder and I think this video is ruining his career. Please take the video down. And I said, I completely understand where you're coming from and I've been in those shoes myself. I want you to do something for me and look through the comments and just count. Count how many comments were positive and then count how many ones were negative. She was like, okay. She's like, okay, we got like 270 positive ones and four negative ones. And I was like, okay, so four people? is ruining your kid's career. <laughs> Guarantee you not. <laughs> Guarantee you not. <laughs> yeah, so that, so that, and then she said, you're right, I'm going to leave it up. And I said, of course you should leave it up. He did a good trick and his video has like 2 million views. He's trying to be part of the industry. You need exposure. That's another thing, like the hardest part about being in skateboarding or any, any industry is getting known. Yeah, exposure is the hardest thing. Skill is requirement. But it, the exposure is really what you need. Yeah. And if you get the exposure, that's what, if, if you're smart about it, you can capitalize. And that's where you can make a you can make money, you can make a career, you can make opportunities for yourself with right. exposure. There are a lot of people that are extremely talented and don't have exposure. And then it's really hard. And and sometimes it is like a, a luck thing. Right. Someone who has a bunch of follow a good following reshares it or reposts yes. or whatever. And like Yeah, you get yeah. these boosts of luck. But even those boosts of luck, like in the end, like Go ten years later if you didn't have the skill behind it. Yeah. And the skill if you can't, if you it, can't keep, you the, have to keep it going. Keep it going. That's yeah. a, even a super struggle for us keeping it going. Dude, we're at five thousand plus videos. How do we come up with new ideas? Yeah. How do we keep it going in the internet and all these changes with YouTube and Shorts? And now the world is changing again.
You know what's crazy though is I don't know if you've looked more into the shorts, but like shorts, they're gonna start doing an ad split. I know, right? And so, and on YouTube, I actually got an email from YouTube the other day saying, "Bring." I forgot how they worded it, but YouTube themselves said yeah. like, "Breathe new life into your previous videos." By there's a way now yes. you can do it through the through the back end yeah. to just make a short version of the videos that already exist. That's right, and then. Yeah, you can make a short version of the videos that exist and you can put an in card that links the long video. Yeah. You can also link the video in the comments. I know we're okay. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. We're messing but, but, with but all that's, this. that's awesome. I think that yeah, that's actually gonna interesting. be that's gonna be a good help to the idea of like, man, what do we come up with now with yeah. having five thousand? Here's a bunch of more, you know, and that the shorts, man, like what I've seen is just like exponential growth yeah because the algorithm is different than the main video uploads it's interesting and it used to be all together and kind of mess your channel up and i think just recently as of yeah. maybe a week or two ago they actually separated, separated. it out so yeah. now it's more proper yeah i just started i just uploaded my first short maybe a week ago my first short on the main channel yeah we have a shorts channel that's been doing its thing right but, but like, now now that they're separated you don't even need the second i mean you can still do it but it's channel like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so now um, we're doing everything. Yeah. They're still like, ah, well, we still got to make the long form content. Like that you can't gotta, stop. You got to. That can't right? stop. Yeah. Right. So yeah, now even talking about the industry before, the only way to be part of anything is through Thrasher Magazine, Trans World. You're a part of a company. Now you don't even need companies. You, you literally just do your own thing, put it out there, monetize yourself and push it forward. And that is, you know, to the old industry, the blockbuster, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I understand that too. You have to innovate and adapt to the times. Always. And, and I, I hate seeing older companies, not just in, in skateboarding, but yeah. in music and et cetera, et cetera. Like when they are having trouble adapting, they want to hold down the people that are adapting. Yeah. It's like, bro, like that's like just when the Radiohead had no, no, they put out their album on their own. Mm -hmm. I remember when that happened, I was like, this is, I don't understand the music industry really at all. But I know that was kind of like a bold move. Yeah. And and uh, a lot of these artists have started doing that more and more. It's just like, yeah, like you don't need to be giving a giant cut to yeah. these people that... 90%. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can just do it on your own. Um, all these other big companies, like you can still thrive. You you don't yes. have to be the crab in the bucket. You there can, you, are you can, enough, yes. You can, you can innovate and adapt to the times and keep it going. Right. You yeah. do have to it's just, it, But it, it's work. It's <laughs> it is work. work. And I think that's where people get lazy and they just want to be, I want it this way because I'm used to this way. Yes. How you guys continuously innovate, adapt, study, cater to the current audience and come up with ideas to find new ways to entertain, man. That's, that's not only incredible, uh, it's inspiring. What you guys do, man, motivates me, uh, not only as, a, as an active viewer and, and uh, supporter, but also too, like, with the things that I want to do outside of even skateboarding. Like I study what you guys do and I'm like, man, like they got it on lock. <laughs> yeah. And I know I'm sure there are times where it's like, oh man, are we going to keep it on lock? Like that's- Yeah, I don't feel like we're on lock at No, all. But, but, but that's with any creator. Like I, yeah. like all the, the, the big YouTubers that I know and all that stuff, like it's it, that's a constant struggle. But yeah. I think that pressure is good though. Yeah, I think like, so too. Because if you don't have that pressure, like then you get complacent and then you fall behind. Exactly. It is hard to keep it on lock. Yes. But- from what I see, man, you guys are doing an exceptional job. Thank you. And uh, man, I just appreciate everything you guys do for skateboarding, all the hard work. Like you were telling me, you know, you're a workaholic, seven days a week, no vacations, pretty much, or like no holidays off even. Um, before we we wrap this up, like, how do you manage that? How do you balance your life to have a wife, have dogs, run this business, skate for another company? Like, <laughs> how do you not lose your mind, bro? Yeah, good question. Well, I I think and I really believe this. I feel like when you do something that you really love and it's your passion, like there's no work days, right? Right. Because you're going, you know, even my wife sometimes she says, oh, you're going to work. You're going to go ride skateboards. I'm like, that's <laughs> my work. If that doesn't pay the bills, then it wouldn't be work. But it does pay the bills and yeah. it does it does do its thing. But I you have to have something you love mm -hmm. because if you're like, oh, I'm working at Walmart and I hate it and I hate going to work. And then you think, oh, I'm going to work 16 hours a day every day. That sounds terrible. But also when you produce something that you're really proud of, there's no better feeling than that. Yeah. Like I've never like taken a vacation or a day off and been like, 
wow, I really did something dope today. You know what I mean? <laughs> the the day that you spent when, you know, you made that video with the sounds mm -hmm. and all of that and, and that video goes up and people go, wow, this is sick. Like that's a proud moment. Yeah. That's not a moment that you had on vacation. Right. You didn't, you were not like sitting in a swimming pool going like, ah, oh, this is, fi I finally made it. This is a life. Let me just chill. I think that's where people lose it. I think, yeah. I think the actual viewpoint is switched and people understand that if you really analyze the numbers where people start to lose it is when they retire. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, what's funny is like every year on my birthday, I like to release some type of creative content and it's like, and usually like the week before my birthday, I'm like, when I, I do, I do like to celebrate. I yeah, do like, yeah. I do like to turn up and I like yeah, to like, have and my, do that. And but, that's part of but it. But one of the things that gets me super excited is dropping a brand new project, whether yeah. it's a new song, a music video or some type of artistic piece, whatever it is. But I'm like, and my, sometimes my friends will be like, yo, like, bro, why are you doing that on your birthday, man? It's like this one thing. No, but that excite yeah. that gets me like, man, like that Stoked. makes Something me want to celebrate more than anything is if I can on the day of whatever or, you know, d deliver this. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, obviously that applies to me in more days than just my birthday. But on my yeah. birthday, like I, I, I have to do something. Yeah. Drop something. And then it's like it's work, but it's fun, man. And, and then it, you so earned gratifying. it. Yeah. Right. So, so, you know, it's not that I don't like have weekends with my wife and go take her places and have dinners and have fun times yeah. like that and celebrate and do those moments as well. But I just, I always, even during those days, whether it's a good or bad thing, I'm always working. <laughs> I do try to go, I go like, okay, this is my time with my wife. I'm putting the phone away and I make her put her phone away. You turn, yeah, and we you just power like, off get from, from out of the it. grind. Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, I wake up the next day and I'm like, oh, where are the stats? What are we doing? What do we got here? Okay. Time we to go. Need this. We got to answer <laughs> these comments. We got to go on all this. Oh, wait, I got to run this. I got to send these people all these messages and get them moving yeah. the whole nine yards it's just just working all the time yeah. but i think that that's a good thing and i think the day you you decide oh i'm gonna do less of that is the day you died a little bit the things that you really love to do which are work yeah it's like you get this high that's like almost an like you can't really explain it like yeah it's it's so exciting yeah and it's so fulfilling that like man like that is way better than like you were saying any vacation like when i when i like my friends try to sometimes t get me to go do things for several days of just like chilling and going to a cabin or whatever i'm like sounds beautiful yeah i would love to want to be there all the whole three four days yeah but after day one i'm like i, got, I need to go do something yeah I, I exactly need, I need to create or or be working on something bigger than me Exactly. So imagine you had nothing to do for a year. You would, that's bro, where you lose it. <laughs> bro, I, I, hell no. That, you don't lose it bro. like overworking. I don't know. People have this <laughs> viewpoint that like, oh, like, yeah, there's a certain thing is called like burnout or whatever. But yeah. I think that like all of that negativity and all those haters that just started to get to you. You just started to, you started to believe that in yeah. some sense. Right. Yeah. And then there's like nothing to chase. I feel like. Yeah. Well, then what? What, what am I doing? Well, that's the other thing that's interesting is like when I had this huge goal, like let's hit a million subscribers. Let's have more subscribers than anybody else. And then I hit that and then I was like, hey, what's next? What are we going to do now? Yeah. You got to pick a new goal, a new, bigger, better goal. What was goal. the new goal for you? Man, now I'm working really hard on this app and a membership platform because I'm trying to bring skateboarding and teach skateboarding. Yeah. So there's one way to do it. You, you make a video on YouTube. You never have a connection with that person. They saw the video. You don't even know if they learned the trick. You don't even know who. You don't even know who, where they are, whether they learned it, anything. So are we really actually growing skateboarding? So then I built this app that literally maps the growth of skateboarding. Right now we have 250,000 people on there and you can wow. sign up. Wait, so this is already out. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't I'm, even know about this. It's out. I haven't like Promoted yet. It. No, I totally. have, but it's like, I'm not, I'm not happy with the service that's there. Mm. What I'm going to be building into it is a person like, so this kid, he has signs up for the membership, which I have no idea how much it's going to be. There is a membership right now, but the part I'm talking about is not yet Still being built. Yeah. I'm going through nightmares trying to get the coding done. Wow. Yeah. So, but the idea of You're it, doing the coding? Not me. Oh, okay. No, but, yeah, working yeah, yeah. with somebody. Gotcha. And I just lost my coder. Oh. He got taken from a to Amazon. Damn. And now I'm just working, trying to get a new coder yeah. and try to switch it out. It's crazy. And I've been working on this app for years. Wow. Like five plus years. 
Yeah, spend a lot of money, put it, you know, people wonder, where's the money go? It goes into the app, <laughs> you guys. You think anything is cheap, build an app. <laughs> yeah. Like build an app that maps skateboarding over the entire world. Wow. And it literally like is basically its own self-sufficient social media platform. You can post videos, you can follow people, you can share content. Wow. It has, wait, wait, what is this app called? Braille skateboarding. Oh, it's, it's Braille skateboarding. Yeah. Wow. You can check it out on the app store. Yeah, I'm going to download but, it. But what I'm trying to build into this is that there's a list of tricks in the correct order and the brand new skater gets on there and then he has a coach that he's then linked up with and then he goes, I'm trying to learn to Ollie. And then he has all the practice steps of Ollie. And then he- Does this coach a real person? Yes. Real person. So he films his practice step of the ollie and that video goes to the coach and the coach says, you're moving your foot wrong, you're doing this, fix it, and then do the practice step. This part's step. not live yet. N exactly. Okay. This is the part that I'm working on. It sounds already like, I'm like trying to, in my head, trying to break down, how does that work? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah, but basically it's, it's pretty simple. You just have the trick you're trying to learn and you video yourself trying to right. do the trick and send it to somebody and they correct you and send it back and then you learn the trick. No, but the, and co now the we're coach connected. is another user or is a, is a coach like a, uh, a Braille employee? Yeah. Like, how does that work? I'm the coach. You're the coach? Yeah, literally. Oh, wow. Uh, it's so wait, 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 small. How did you do this? Oh. Right now, it's done. Right now, we sort of have this in operation where it's called Braille Army Plus. That's the membership. Right now, I believe it costs six ninety nine, And that's through the App Store or Google Play or yeah. you can sign up on the website. And then you get part of a members only Discord, but it's janky to have it through Discord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they send me their video on Discord. They say, Aaron, I'm trying to learn tray flips. They send me their tray flip attempt. I give them videos, message, and I say, do this, lean back before you pop, lean back, wait to the back foot. Da -da 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 -da. Question on that. And how would you do that at scale? Yeah. Like when you have a bunch of people sending you clips. You hire new coaches. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> okay, so it's not right going to be you now, forever. No. <laughs> I was like, bro, but how right now I'm the only coach. Gotcha. I'm Damn. the only coach. So to so if I have enough people that now I can't coach everybody. Yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah. I thought, man, I'm going to be flooded. I'm going to have too many people asking me questions. Yeah. And I didn't. Even with like, wow. you know, a good amount of people, like I can handle all of the traffic very easily. That's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. But it's either like I haven't set it up right or it's not totally working right. Mm. When I build, like basically the front end of it is built and the back end, the coaching side is not yet built. Mm. But once that gets coded and these link up, then I go. Bro, that's brilliant. Yeah. So I'm trying to use that. So it's like I'm trying to make it so anybody anywhere can link up and learn how to skate. That's cool. So they just bro. get on there. They have the app. They can learn all the tricks. Sick. And then they can improve their own skateboarding. And then the idea is that then they turn around and then help other people in their community. So that's the other piece of it. Wow. So I want people to take responsibility for, you know, I have this kid that he's from Turkey and he has a skateboard channel, a Turkish skateboard channel, literally dubbed in Turkish. Yeah. And, and I have a rush. You might not even know this. I have a Russian YouTube channel. I didn't know that. Yeah, 500,000 subs in Russian. And all he does is dub over the tutorials so people in Russia can learn. Bro, when I saw Mr. Beast talk about that, yeah. I was like, that is ingenious. Like, yeah. everyone who has a big channel needs to do that. And that's I love to hear that you're doing that. Yeah, well, I, I realized, okay, so I made all these tutorials, but what about people who don't speak English? Yeah. They can't learn. Yeah. So then I, I now I have Spanish, French, what? Russian. And wow. yeah, I have Bro. a lot. Yeah. So, and I haven't, Brilliant. that I haven't put enough attention on. I put too much attention on, let's just make viral videos mm. and not enough attention on tutorials and teaching and growing skateboarding. And that's where I've yeah, started I, to I saw, off. I don't know if you saw uh, Mr. Beast talk about it, but he's getting way more views now on the other languages on videos he already has yeah. than he's getting on his current videos, which already make an insane amount of, it's sick yeah <laughs> it's interesting because the adsense is different right yeah. so then you have like the spanish adsense which is way less than ours so that's mm. a big factor so yeah. i will hire these guys and i'll be like you have a portion of the adsense this is basically your channel right as long as you're dubbing it over you get a cut of that a, adsense yeah. for that channel that's how we run it smart so it is smart but then sometimes it the adsense is so little really? the person can't make it no way. Yeah. And where it works is places like 
Russia, where the U.S. dollar, you know, yeah, and I know U.S. and Russia has whatever conflict they're having, but that you know, but not fans of skateboarding, right? I know, but you know what's interesting is I have kids in Russia who are subscribed to my app, and the United States and Russia get into a conflict, and they, uh, they unsubscribed all of those kids. Literally, just overnight. Just you can't, you cannot use the oh, service because you're a Russian kid. And I started thinking, imagine you're a little kid in Russia. You're just trying to learn how to kickflip. Fucking sucks. And now all of a sudden, you can't even do the service because you were born in this country wow. that's having a fight with another. Isn't it wild? It sucks, man. Think about that kind of stuff. That's it's heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah, that's terrible, man. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting thing. <sighs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hope I don't know if they have VPNs out there, but hopefully they end up getting some type of access, man. Yeah. So it'll be an interesting thing to see where everything goes. But that's so that's what I really that's what I'm really passionate about. More than like I just want to skate a glass skateboard and have that video do 20 million views, whatever. Right, right. Like that is what that, it that's is. It's fun. It's fun you, and it's exciting. Yeah. And hopefully it brings people into but skateboarding. The, the core for you is like reaching as many skaters across the world. Yeah. That's beautiful. And if a bunch of skaters want to hate my guts for doing that, let's go. Fuck, let's go. Bro. Nah, man. It's an interesting thing, though. Bro, huh? it, it is, man. And I'm telling you, man, like, just I've seen so much stuff behind the scenes in skateboarding where it's just like, honestly, man, I fucking hate a lot of the skate industry now. Yeah. Oh, I saw this sweater. I thought it was so good. It's from Skate Mental, which is, you know, it yeah. said, I love skateboarding. I hate skateboarders. And I thought, why didn't I make that sweater? <laughs> Why didn't I come up with that first? But I also like, I don't want to be in a place where I spread. I love, I'm a skate rat. Like the other thing is like these people, I feel like there's now that I'm like where I am, I feel like it's created this barrier. And I'm at this place where I almost start need to like reach out to these people and be like, I got no hate for you. I got nothing but love. Please keep doing what you're doing. Do your skateboard company, please. I'm trying to bring in new people and hopefully that gives you new customers. Because if you own a skate shop and you haven't had somebody, some kid walk in because of Braille skateboarding, I'll be shocked. And I hope it helped your shop work. And I'm not trying to take business away from your local shop. We're trying to flood it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's amazing. Like now we try to, we call these shops and we say, we want to sell you Braille skateboards. And all the number of shops that say, we want to have nothing to do with you Braille skateboarding. It's amazing. So stupid. Shocker. Why are we doing that as an industry? Let's bring in new That's skaters. What yeah, like, like, I'll come to your oh. shop and do a demo and we'll fill the place and we'll sign autographs and you can sell Bro, boards. Strength in numbers, man. Let's you go. Stupid ass skateboard companies and then heads that are like, yeah, man, the, we, we all do way better together. Yeah. But e- and even in, you know, all those, so all those barriers that we got to break them down. And I feel like I got to break them down and I got to start going out and doing more podcasts and bringing, you know, like I said, you're like, I don't really do this ever. I'm just very, I appreciate you shell. giving me your time, bro. Like, yeah. this was cool, man. I like, not only has it been a great conversation, man, but I think there's so much gold in this conversation. Like not only conversation for me, but like when people see this, I think people are like, just gets a lot of enlightenment, a lot of inspiration. Yeah, thank um, you. Outside of what you're already doing to inspire, but like this, this was a powerful conversation, man. And, and I appreciate your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, man, this is this is sick, bro. And yeah, uh, I I just hope more skateboarders can like stop with all that bullshit, just come together and just keep doing like what you're doing, man. Just to give to skateboarding. That's how simple it is. Yeah. We need like a PR program for skateboarding, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Because we're losing to Minecraft, bro. We got to stop. We, How are we please. Gonna lose to Minecraft? <laughs> no <laughs> hate on the Minecraft yeah, yeah, people. No, we dope, love yeah, all the yeah, video yeah, games my, my too. My little brother loves playing it, but yeah, it's like, yo, skateboarding is dope, bro. We need, we need more eyes on skateboarding. We do. Yeah. I'll take responsibility to get out there and reach those people and talk to them. Thank you for everything you do for skateboarding. Um, any, any last words you want to say to the podcast or the people? Subscribe, like, leave a comment below. Hey, there it is. <laughs> uh, hey, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Braille. And thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.